Good evening, friends, and welcome to the Calyx. I'm so glad you are here this evening. We have quite an adventure planned for you, and I'm going to introduce my guests in just a moment. But first, quick word of business. This video is sponsored by Call of Cthulhu and Chaosium, and I just want to tell you a little bit about them. For over 35 years, Call of Cthulhu has been regarded as the foremost game of horror and mystery. Players take on the role of investigators of mysteries, uncovering dark secrets, encountering strange monsters, and thwarting sinister cults. Together, you and your friends, or my friends, tonight, create and develop a story in which each of your characters plays a leading role which could be foiling some dastardly plot or stopping horrors from beyond space and time. The Call of Cthulhu starter set, which I have and it's absolutely ab excellent, uh, contains everything you need to start playing Call of Cthulhu, the tabletop role playing game of mystery and horror, as I've already stated. Inside, you'll find quick start rules, ready-made investigators, a book of scenarios for one, two, and up to five players, which I ran one of last Saturday, if you were hanging out then, uh, as well as a set of dice and blank character sheets and pre-filled character sheets, which are pretty sweet. To stay up to date with all things Call of Cthulhu, stay tuned to Chaosium Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. Now, without further ado, we will introduce our guests. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you is that we're doing a giveaway in the Twitch chat. We're actually doing five giveaways of various um, scenario books from Call of Cthulhu and Chaosium as the show goes on. So get ready. Let me introduce first up. We have one of my favorite role players. Uh, she plays old men particularly well. You can find her all over. Uh, I think um, she'll have to tell you where all of her many streams are, but uh, we have Gina DeVivo, everyone. Hi. Gina. Hello, Hi. hello, hello, hello. I'm so I glad you're here. that is the opening. She plays old men well. <laughs> yeah, it's all I can think about. It is like, my favorite. It's just my favorite. <laughs> Um, well, you have some streams coming up. Uh, you had one yes. recently that people can look up. Um, do you want to shout out where those are? Sure, sure. Uh, if you want to check out a, a very fun D and D campaign happening right now, uh, failed save over at Pixel Circus. We just had our very first premiere episode, and it was a lot of fun. And again, played an old man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and um, if uh, Star Trek is your thing, uh, Clear Skies, and um, that's Mondays, and it's a lot of fun. On Q times, yeah. yeah? On Q times, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so tell us a little bit about Evelyn Ward. Well, Evelyn Ward is, um, well, she's, some like to call her a shut-in. I'd say that she is a little bit just prefers books and things about history rather than those making it currently. Um, they tend to be louder and instead of while well, reading them. Um, she grew up quite sheltered, um, but I quite enjoyed the quiet. Excellent, I love it. Okay, thank you so much. I can't wait to see how Evelyn re reacts to tonight's scenario. Probably uh, terribly. <laughs> The occult will definitely come along your way. Okay, next up, I want to introduce uh, a goddess, a queen of metal and horror, and uh, really, really can do some 1920s makeup like nobody's business. We've got Ms. Whitney Moore. Hello, my darlings. Hi, love. <laughs> what Hello. an intro. Uh, little brows. <laughs> those brows are doing everything for me. They're so small. <laughs> <laughs> was the style? Was the style? Uh, wait, what have you been up to? Oh Lord, surviving, trying not to go crazy. Um, have I, an email newsletter, which I am signed up for. Yes. Uh, thank you, Becca. I forgot that I no creeping. That. Um, so I have creeping. a newsletter now um, because I really like to recommend music and art to people, and I found that that was just the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can find that at gimmemore.com. 
And I have tomorrow, um, every Thursday, I'm doing a stream in partnership with Metal Sucks called Heavy Metal Happy Hour, where I play an hour of fun music and we hang out and we drink and we talk. And um, tomorrow I have some guests from the band Guar, which I'm really excited about um, because they also, they are so, so fun. And they actually were my guest for another metal show that I'm doing um, that's every Monday in August um, on Sci-Fi called Metal Crush. And they're extended interviews with people in the metal industry about their love for horror and science fiction and genre stuff and gore came on that too and they killed me and i i bled Wait, they actually killed you yeah they fed me poisoned coffee and i died in service of gore because they're always looking for um sacrifices so I, yeah. I remember when they came to town when i was growing up and uh my friends all went to the show i didn't go but they, everyone came back covered in fake blood that's just yes. the kind of performance they put on it's i like, love it it's like they have giant cannons and like water guns and it's all like red and, and green goop and it's so it's good and then on friday i'm also joining gina um as a guest on um failed throw which i'm very excited about so um you can catch me on there as well this friday Awesome, awesome. You know what, I'm gonna come back to your character description because I wanna get everybody in here and then we'll do the rest of the character descriptions. Um, I wanna introduce uh, one of my favorite people. We we got to go to New York together right before the world ended and uh, she's one of the sweetest people I know. So talented in so many ways, brilliant actress, Steph Woodburn, hey, hey, hey. Oh, hello, how are you? Doing so well, so excited to get into the horror tonight. Me too. I'm just adjusting my technology. Okay. <laughs> You're good. You're good. It changed. Um, hey, I um, haven't been very active on Twitch during the pandemic, just spending time with um, family and uh, writing and hustling for those, those writing gigs. Um, but yeah, I love being back here and it was super fun to get to go to New York with you. If, if I know, great. yeah, if you wanna check out Fan Fatales on the Complex's Facebook page, yeah. you can find us. We had a blast, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, we'll hear about Abigail Formosa in just a moment, but right now, coming to the stage, I know she's been streaming quite a bit because I have been lurking. Uh, a comic book expert extraordinaire, uh, a wealth of knowledge on all things nerdy. We got Amy Dallin. Hey, Yay. it's so good Yay. to see all of your faces. The gang's all back together again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, everybody's popping in chat. This is awesome. We got a good little crowd hanging out. Okay, cool. Well, now that we're all here, let's pop back on over to Whitney. Tell us a little bit about Eloise Dorman. Eloise Dorman, she's just a gal about town, you know? She um, she just graduated college, she's a close friend of Evelyn, and um, I think that we'll find out that Evelyn has a wild streak inside of her that she doesn't reveal to people. Um, I, I was an arts major, I am a surrealist painter, and just kind of a gal about town, just trying to cut a rug, you know? We're all trying to cut rugs, you know? <laughs> Left and right. You just got to cut those rugs. I love it. I love it. Uh, and then Abigail, Abigail Formosa, oh, yeah. you are a journalist, are you? I'm a journalist. I'm from Minnesota. I am quiet, except when I'm reading aloud from my journal, which I write everything in. And sometimes, and life isn't about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself, by the way. And uh, I have some, my, my favorite belief is that the truth is out there and I'm always trying to find it. So that's where I'm at. And, and sometimes I rely on Evelyn because she's such a great consultant because I've got to have facts because facts are really important in news. It's 1925. That, that was what happened in the time back then. Absolutely. It is, in fact, 1925. We are in Ipswich, Massachusetts, and we'll get into exactly what our scenario is right after we meet a private investigator, Ruth Bleeker. Ruth Bleeker, P.I. I go where the action is. Uh, I believe in getting my hands dirty. If you meet Ruth, she might not have a smudge on her face and her sleeves rolled up, but that's how you're going to remember her. But it's it's more exciting this way. I grew up in New York City. I lost my sister. And you know what? Life is short. 
Life is short, and there's plenty of crooked people out there who need taken down, and it turns out there's a whole job for that. And I got that job, and uh, we're going to solve some more mysteries tonight. Indeed, we are. All right. Uh, so let's get in to our adventure for Evelyn, Eloise, Ruth, and Abigail. So it's 1925. We're in Ipswich, Massachusetts. You may know it as Lovecraft Country. Uh, this is a bucolic, a little bit rural town. It's outside of Arkham. We're near the famous Miskatonic University. It's best known for its programming in the occult. Many students uh, study the occult, of course, there. There we go. Let's do a little. And, uh, well, Eloise. Eloise, you just received a telegram from an old family friend, a Mrs. Enid Carrington. Mrs. Enid Carrington. She's a bit much. She, uh, she we'll see in a moment. Um, but she sent you a telegram saying that her new property had been vandalized and that you need to come over immediately because she knows you can get the truth out of anyone and she wants to find out what happened. Well, she's right about that. Poor Enid, she just can't get her life together. I feel so bad. Now, uh, of course, the police were also contacted. Uh, this is a large estate, the Carrington estate. They are uh, constructing this new property, and on the manor are uh, many luxurious, luxurious developments. And so they had to call the police, and the police contacted a private dick, Ruth Bleeker. Yeah, uh, one of the best, obviously. Uh, the police were stumped. Typically, if it's a cut and dry case, they'll handle it themselves, but uh, they couldn't do anything without Ruth. So Ruth, um, who was it that contacted you? Uh, At the police department. Sergeant uh, Powell. I think it was Sergeant Powell gave you a call and said, yeah, uh, so uh, Bleak's, uh, Look, we're, we're trying not to call you for every case, but this one, well, we just, we can't figure it out. And there was a, there's a broken fountain and you know what? You're just going to have to come down and he gives you the address. You're calling me for a broken fountain? Well, you know, if you knew Miss Carrington, it's not just the fountain. I mean, she really wants to press charges and, well, there's something strange here. Some, some rocks. I don't know. Just get over here. All right, I'll come look at your rocks, pal. <laughs> now, I believe you called up a friend uh, that, that specializes in things most unnatural. I told you to bring her on uh, your next case. Yes, Ms. Ward. Yes. What are you doing tonight? Staying home. You sure about that? Why? What do you have? Oh, I, I'm on a case. Ooh, what kind? I don't know yet, but Powell down at the station, he thinks there's something strange about it. What kind of strange? The good kind of strange or the boring kind of strange? It better not be the boring kind or he wasted a lot of my time calling me. Mine too, and in proximity. What's yeah. strange about it? Something about rocks. <gasps> he was not very forthcoming with the details, but... You know I love rocks. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, what do you say? Sound like a girl? Do you think it'll be a small... A small case? Meaning not that many people on the Do planet? you know, uh... Carrington? Enid Carrington? Oh, Enid! Oh, no. Oh. Somebody mucked up her pool. With rocks? Apparently. Huh, All right. Uh, so as you two rally and get together, we also have uh, Ms. Carrington, furious about all of this, wanted the press to know. She called into the local paper, the Arkham Review, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and was talking to the editor your editor, Ms. Abigail Formosa, oh, yes. over here having this conversation. Is oh, there something strange? Mm. I'm, on a, I'm on a phone call, Ms. Formosa. Uh, there's something strange about weird rocks. 
Unlike anything you've ever seen before? Weird rocks. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, for... Oh my. Okay. So weird rocks. And what, what exactly is going on with the weird rocks? Miss Famosa, I don't know. I feel like we should give this to one of our more senior reporters. Oh no, this is weird rocks. I'm the wor I'm the best for it. I have experience in weird rocks. We've had many weird rocks from where I'm from, um, in the great state of Minnesota, and right next okay. to Michigan. Well, if you really think you can handle this one, but I'm telling you, if this article isn't up to snuff and you don't get to the bottom of helping Miss Carrington make her sound good because her family funds a major part of the paper. Oh, mm. okay. So it's quite political and we need we need their financing. Okay, we so we need to make need her happy. To be written about in a way that they prefer. Are you asking me to have a slant on, on my journalism? Oh, I would never dare. Okay, just yes. checking. Okay, just, oh, oh, you mean no. And by no, Let's you mean- the job. Get out to the okay. Carrington residence. Okay, yeah. okay, I will, I will. Yes, 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 sir, ma'am, sir. All right. Okay. So you're all at the Carrington Hall. <gasps> Evelyn! Eloise! <gasps> well, oh, oh God. Oh, 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 my squeeze. How are you, darling? Oh, I, did you hear about the rocks? I'm real, this is quite an exciting day. Darling, the only rock. Listen, I need you to get to the bottom of this no matter what it is. <gasps> oh, Evel, Evel, Eloise. Eden, oh. are you all right? <sighs> well, you yes. You must be devastated. I am. I am. I don't know where my daughter Mary is. She's off at university. I put in a call to her to tell her to rush home. You won't believe what's happened. My home. It's been tampered with. I, I don't live there yet, but 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 I will soon. And just think that there's some huge thing has destroyed. A, must be a whole band of hooligans. Miss Enid, you need to just take a breath. You're <laughs> so, oh, this is a lot. This is a lot. Oh. Take a moment. Do you have a It goes into a conniption. <sighs> okay. Look, why don't you? Oh, you. Uh, are you the private investigator? That would be me. Hi, ma'am. Yes. Well, the police said they were sending for someone else. It seems to be over their head. But oh, I'm I'm a journalist, so I'm here to to report on your um happenings. Yes, I figure the, if the word gets out, then that's how we get to the bottom of a crime. We need to find who did this, and they need to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Prosecuted. Was anybody hurt? Well, well, the marble boy within the fountain, he was hurt. You'll see that very shortly if you go around back of... Oh, you can see the manner I'm designing here. They're scaffolding up now, but... The victim was a man of stone. A marble boy. A marble boy. Yes. So no one was actually, yes, that's right. Anyway, right. Can, I've can got you to talk just show us around? I, well, I've got to talk to the police chief, but I'll let you have a look around. Please, if anyone says uh, to all four of you, uh, you you seem to be uh, know each other? Yes. No, oh, hi, I don't know. Ruth. I don't I don't know you. Hi, hi Ruth. Right, right. Nice well, to meet uh, you're right yes. here with the paper? I'm with the paper, yes, but I know Evelyn because she is a fantastic consultant and we've worked together a little bit. She is oh. the best. And you, I want to turn to the slightly overdressed, possibly lost girl. Oh, lost girl. Oh, who me? No, I'm never lost. I'm here for emotional support. Um, you see, Evelyn is my friend, and um, well, Miss Enid is my friend, and just I get the feeling that wherever I go, my presence is needed and is wanted and people just need to have me around i find so i'm here my name is eloise what is your name ruth ruth Laker, <sighs> eloise, you right. oh, no, thank you so Apple. much for coming to my rescue i'm going to get you oh would you like a drink a sip of brandy oh yes please thank you so much i'll have someone go in the house in oh oh you Wait, brought your own i see i'm sorry oh, good oh you brought good. your own Oh, yes, I never go anywhere without my oh. brandy. Okay. Abigail Formosa, I just want to let you know that I adore your work, and oh. I am a friend to the press. You may have heard of me. You may have um, been to the benefits that my family throws. And oh, I just yes. Want to 
now. There's nothing that is off topic with me. I am oh. absolutely a friend of the press. Okay, okay, good to know. Yeah, I've read lots about you on page five. Sure you have. Huh. Evelyn, you <laughs> vouch for your lady friend here? Oh yes, she's one of the most brilliant painters I've ever had the privilege of examining. Um, oh, they're beautiful. I own seven. <gasps> oh, oh, you've oh, always been my biggest seven. supporter, ain't it? Well, <laughs> and how could I not be? Now, Eloise, I want you uh, to take the party and feel free to have free reign. Just head behind the house and head to the fountain. And she sends you on her way as she goes to talk to the police chief. Oh, uh, so you guys head back there and we can show you a map of the grounds in just oh. a moment. Um, but you head back and you see uh, a lot of construction workers milling about. They had come to work uh, and uh, had found everything in disrepair. Now, uh, last night is when all of this happened. And this morning, you they came to work and, and they found that the fountain was broken. As she mentioned, there was uh, a, a rather strange marble statue that's now in pieces. And um, and yeah, you guys can take a look around. Um, a strange marble, uh, do you mean it wasn't there previously? Like the stone boy was left? This, the marble statue was there. Uh, there's a okay. shattered statue, but what wasn't there that uh, uh, if you if you talk to the police chief, actually he, he walks up to you and, oh. hey, hey, Ruth, Leeks. Hi. Uh, look, uh, th there's a lot going on here. Um, you see the foreman and his men are still trying to work, but uh, Look, we found these strange rocks, and uh, the Carrington woman, she put them in the cellar of the house. She moved uh, them? Yeah, she... she, she huh? oh. Well, uh, actually, it was the workmen that moved them. All right. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, take a look around, please. If you find any oh. evidence, just, just take care of the investigation. I, I need this Carrington woman off my back, and I'm actually going to go back to the station now. Mm. It's a good thing they moved the rocks so that it wouldn't clutter up the crime scene. I, I don't know if that was the, the best call entirely. Possibly you're using your sarcasm again. Uh, yeah. I better go look at the rocks. Oh, you're a quick one. Do you want to go uh, towards the I would like to. Cellar? That's the only thing I'm interested in. I just want to see the rocks. I, I want to be outside as little as possible. And a cellar sounds Wonderful. Excellent. All right, there are a lot, a lot of men milling about uh, the construction workers. And uh, well, I know that you're a little or agoraphobic. Yes. Eloise, dear, would you mind mm -hmm. accompanying me to the cellar? I, I, I might use your sketch skills so that I might be able to, to I don't think they'll let me keep the rocks. So Not at all, my dear girl. I've got my pen and paper right here. I'm oh, here to assist. You're such a gem. Evelyn, when uh, has it been a very long time since you left the house? Um, well, uh, so I sometimes go on walks that my doctor recommends, but um, for the most part, it's been a bit. Um, it really must... drags me out of the house a lot of the time, and sometimes Eloise gives me lots of house visits, so I have company. Um, I got, but no, this is a lot of people for this you. Is a I'm lot. actually going to yes. have you roll um, for sanity for me. Um, wonderful. It, it's it's actually it's really overwhelming. All these it's people that see with your phobia, yeah. and they all want to talk to me. That's new. <laughs> so how, do, right, I just, so, do I just roll my percentile? Exactly. Yeah. So with Call of Cthulhu, we do percentile dice. So that's two d10s, uh, and then you're aiming to roll below your skill level. Okay. Oh well, that's that. I got a fifteen on the die, and so I'm, I'm holding it together. I think. You take a deep breath, but uh, after you close your eyes, you remember to count as you exhale, and that helps. All right. Uh, so you head over. Uh, is, is anybody staying to look around the fountain, or are you all going to the cellar? Oh, I'd like to look around the fountain just to just to get the lay of the land. Okay, all right. I'll stick with Abigail. Okay, you two stick around the fountain. Uh, Evelyn and then Eloise, are you going with her? Yes. 
Okay, so you guys head to the cellar. Uh, Mrs. Carrington uh, is standing at the door, just hovering there. Oh, good, good, good. I wanted to show you. Are you ready to see the, the I forgot to say, I was so excited to see you, Eloise. These strange, strange rocks. They're so bizarre, but they're sort of beautiful. And she leads you through a, a, a very heavy steel door that they've installed. I figured we wouldn't want anyone coming in stealing. You never know what we'd keep down here. And as she leads yeah. you down, Absolutely right, Enid. You just don't know with people. You never do. Um, there's tools hanging from the walls. There's a, a very small window. Um, and uh, you can see that there are many padlocks on the outside of this door. Um, as you go down into the room, there is a workbench. And you see uh, on it these, these rocks that she had mentioned. Is this a padded cell because it's a wine cellar? Is this the good stuff? Oh, yes, I keep my best bottles down here. I mean, I will when we move in fully. Sure, sure. What do the rocks look like? All right, I think we've got an image of the cellar. So the rocks are on a table. They're sort of um, banana shaped. They're, they're like a seashell exterior, uh, like that hard uh, shape, but they're sort of stone-like. They're like nothing you've seen before. And the color is somewhat pearlescent. Uh, and in the right light, some parts of them are part of kind of beautiful. Other parts are sort of like jagged. And uh, can I get a spot hidden roll? Oh, from whom? From me? From everyone in the cellar. Ah, all right. Negatory. Spot hidden. Uh, I don't have, oh, yes, yes, I got a four out of 20. A four, oh that's incredible. All right, uh, Eloise, wow. you notice these don't look like rocks. Uh, there, there, there seems to be a bunch, there's, there's five of them. Uh, and it looks like, there had been a six. There's sort of like a, a place where they all connect and there's a broken off piece. Yes, banana-shaped, pearlescent rock, something like this, I think. Oh, hang on, oh, I have excellent. some dust in my hand. Hold eye. on, like, yes. Oh, just, oh, 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 it looks like a cup. You know I always have a surrealist bend on my, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, Evelyn. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any skill in the sciences? Can I do. Science role. I do. Um, I do have it. Um, I also have archaeology. Um, Ooh. Yeah. How about how about you give me an archaeology role? All right. Because um, I I have a specific study in chemistry. I generally know science, but more chemistry based. Hmm. Uh. Oh. I, okay. I'm gonna spend some luck. I need five points. Oh, excellent. I love it. Yes, everybody, you have luck points. And uh, you may roll if I instruct you to roll for luck. You also may use those points as a resource and spend them. So perfect. Go down five points in luck. OK. So you succeeded on an archaeology roll? I did one, yes. I succeeded by spending five points. Awesome. OK. Uh, you know that these are not rocks. They, these are, these are something different. These are, they're not uh, made of earth and stone. They seem to have some sort of liquid inside of them. Eloise, these are not rocks. These are definitely something different. Well, there's water inside of them. Or, there's something wet. Something wet. Yes, well, there is there, can we, uh, can we open one? Let's look for well, a... Well, we mustn't destroy. Yeah that, yeah, that would be my thing. Perhaps we could take one for evidence and uh, analysis, right? Uh, Mrs. Carrington is standing right behind you. Don't touch them. They're, they might be valuable. I need to have them appraised. I just don't know where to go. Eloise, do you know a good appraiser? 
Yes, I absolutely do. You came to the right person, Enid. We're just going to take one because if they are valuable, we don't want to compromise any of them. So we're No, just no, I couldn't have them leave. Can you roll a, a persuade for me, yes. Eloise? Is there an assist tech, like a mechanic within this game? No. Well, then story -wise. Although, if you can justify it to me, I can always give a bonus die. Well, I would just like to say that the fact that she does not consider me an expert of appraisal in this instance is frankly bothering me quite a lot. So I'm mean mugging from behind. Eloise really, right in, you know, we have the best of the best right here. I absolutely failed that role, but oh, no. I do think that we can make yeah. it happen right here. How, what was it, a critical failure? Was it a 96 uh, or above? My Persuade, oh, is, it's just the standard, which is 10%, right? And I got, yeah. I rolled a 79. Oh, no worries, no worries, it's all good. Okay, well, she's not gonna let you take one out of here. Uh, as you guys studied the eggs further, Ruth eggs. and Abigail, uh, you are at the fountain and uh, you're looking around. Uh, do you want to give me a, a spot hidden roll to tell me so I can tell you uh, what else is happening? For oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, passed. Okay. So, Ruth, you with your keen eye, you get it close. You climb inside the fountain, and there is, there is uh, calf deep water inside uh, and you noticed that there was there was a lot uh, the grass all around it was very waterlogged on the rim of the fountain there are two big gouges about four feet apart and you notice gouges that are maybe a foot long uh, all around the cement floor at the bottom of the fountain like something landed in it or like something was trying to get through the floor? The the foreman walks up to you. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, you, you see that you see the cement? Uh, yeah, it, there's, what's with there's the no scores? one. Hmm? What's with the scoring? Uh, we can't figure it out. I, I don't know. Uh, the police were really puzzled too. There's yeah. nothing in the in uh, all across the lawn. It's just right here on the fountain. No tire tracks. Nothing. Oh, excuse me. Hello there. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could give me your name and anything that you might have seen when uh, this happened. This I'm a reporter. Yes. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, uh, my name is Jeffrey Lowenthal. Yes. Okay, Logan Paul. I'm the um, foreman on this construction site. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, you ladies, uh, you ask me anything you want You want to know, okay? Uh, and, well, as long as I'm allowed to tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> allowed to tell? Are there, are there some things you're not allowed to tell? Oh, uh, well, well or if that's okay, gentlemen, you don't have to tell you how much I'm paid, but... <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. Well, was there anything that you saw before when when this event might have happened of the ruination of the fountain? Well, no. Uh, well, no. I mean, we we just came here and well, I had some of them. Uh, we uh, can you roll for a? Um, do you have a charm roll or persuade? Oh, a I don't know if I'm charming. <laughs> Where is it? Oh yes, it's um fifteen percent. So okay, so that's I need, I need um I need quite a bit then. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna roll here, and I got um I got an eight, which I think actually is a fifteen percent. So yes, that's amazing. I um I am find it in myself to be very charming, and I say, oh hello, four man. Um, I am really uh, loving the truth here, and I mm -hmm. want to find the truth in you, poor man. Oh, oh well, well, Miss, uh, he takes off his hat. Oh, uh, well, well, we uh, we don't get off till about uh, six o'clock, but well, if oh. I could take you out to perhaps dinner or a show, uh, I'd be more than honored. It's just I'm gonna have to be working overtime because. 
Well, one of my men, he left. He's not here. One of the men moved left. some of those rocks to the to the cellar, and then, well, he's been gone. Ooh, gone to a cellar. And his oh, name was Alfred Hackett, Miss. Alfred Hackett. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you hear from him, you see him in town. You tell him he's fired. We'll do that. We'll go look him up. You just, he lives on, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I'll tell you. Where, uh, Board and Arms Hotel in downtown Arkham. 488 West High Lane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Loganthal. That's all I can tell you. All right, do you want to join the rest of your party in the cellar? I take a moment to be quietly in awe of Abby's way of working a scene. Oh, oh, it's not my nature. I'm normally just just here in my books, but I read a lot of fiction about um, lurking. So uh, that's, you, that's how I know. You got to hand out some tips. That was very effective. I usually go with the direct approach. It, it doesn't work that well, let me tell you. You've got to bat the lashes just like that. I awkwardly try to bat. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Doesn't, Can you do that one more time for me? Let's get the bat the lashes. Yeah. And it works. They fall madly in love with you. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. All right. Do you want to join the rest of your party in the cellar? Oh, yes. Yeah. Excellent. You head down the same steel door. Oh, gosh. Okay. Look, please, no one touch. Uh, these rocks are very, very precious, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what they are. Well, Enid, you know that we have a gift for appraisal here. Why don't we just not remove them from the cellar, but appraise them just to see what they could possibly be and what they're worth to you. Oh, oh I already told you, there's no way they are leaving this room. No well, matter appraise what. appraise them right here. Look, Eloise. It looks like one of them's already gone missing. I'm not going to let another. It must have been one of those workmen. Enid, calm down. Oh. You're being hysterical. Well, who else? I asked them to move them into the cellar, and look right there. It's broken. We look right there. <laughs> it's broken. Uh, nice little seashell little things you got here. What? what yes, they're definitely not rocks, but 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 they might be something of of, an, of interest. Oh. I want to start appealing to Enid's sort of sensibilities. They, they might there? definitely be something we've never encountered before. Um, so so maybe I, I I would like to maybe make an occult roll to see if if there's some strange explanation for for these these waterfield Excellent. seashells. Give me a roll for a cult. And uh, Ruth and Abigail, if you want to take a closer look at them and tell me what you'd like to roll for, you're more than welcome. Oh, yeah. Can I, is spot hidden a good basic one? Um, they've already found out that there was one missing with their okay. spot hidden roll. But if you have maybe something in the sciences, maybe you could learn something more about them. Um, I rolled a 26 under uh, for my 50 of a cult. Ooh, that is an excellent roll. That's almost a hard success. Okay, great. As you look closer, Evelyn, you stare yes. into the pearlescentness of them. And yes. it's almost as if they're, they're swirling under your eye. It's so imperceptible, so slight, but there's definitely something moving. And you feel when you hold it in your hand that this has something living within it. <gasps> Oh, there's movement. There's something Definitely. moving. Oh, inside, inside the rock. What? Don't you feel it? It's sloshing around a little bit. That is no oh. normal rock. Maybe, Maybe it's like a paperweight. A paperweight? Like a paperweight with the water and <laughs> my, my appraisal skills are 5%. So I'm thinking that this thing is like, um, it's not a paperweight. Are you sure? I'm pretty but, sure. Oh, and Evelyn, I started... you know for a fact that yes. this, these are eggs from They're... an unknown species. Yes, and you said one of them has a crack in it? Uh, well, no, there's, I could swear one's not there. Ah, well, Unfortunately, that, that there might be something potentially living inside of these. Oh. Um, and I don't actually think a cellar is an appropriate place for them. They should probably be in a lot much, in the much kitchen. warmer. Oh. Yes. 
Oh. We need we need some warm blankets and and possibly um, a bucket. In a fancy a snack. What's your chef's name again? Why don't we just take one of these eggs and Look, just see what these kind of are not we leaving this cellar? And I'm going to post three men, three workmen, all night outside of this door. No one's coming in or out. And these are staying here. And you might hit someone with a price. Oh, in it. Oh. There could be living things inside of these things. Do you want your family to be responsible for the possible harm of a living creature? Do you want that kind of publicity? There is a journalist in the room. Can you roll for Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thirty-seven. And my intimidate is forty. You are rolling out of control. Uh, you see, Miss Carrington just just shaking uncontrollably. Out, out, all of you. Don't write anything about this in the papers. I don't want any of this in the papers. And if you do, I swear we will pull our funding from this paper right now. Oh, we, we love you. We love you, Enid. And we also love the truth, but we love you and the truth. She ushers you guys out and she has one of the workmen. She eyes, gives them the eye to help uh, gently usher you guys up the stairs. You know what? I don't care who knocks apart the marble statues of someone who throws her weight around like that. But Evelyn, did you say eggs? Yes. There is definitely something moving inside of them. They have the exact texture, not necessarily of earth that I've ever studied, but there is something definitely egg-like about them and that they are incubating a living thing. Evelyn, I think we got a line on the missing exact. one. Sorry, Eloise, what did uh, you say? Did he say exact? What I did you say? Did. Uh, did said, you, Ms. Detective, Ms. Detective, did you say you know where the missing one is? Enid, Maybe. Enid corners you. I. You tend to your own business. Fix your, your marble boy. Hmm? Look, I want to know who did this, and I want, I, want, I want that egg brought back or whatever it is. They're beautiful, and I want to keep them. And what you're saying is that you're fine with Abby printing whatever she wants to at the end of this. If we take care yeah. of this little situation. If you find for me whoever took my prized possession and return it. It was locked into your house in the middle of the night last night, that one? The what? Yes. Okay. Well, it was left on my property, so that makes it my property. Okay. Now I'll give each of you, you ready for this? <laughs> well, not you, Eloise. Darling, you do whatever you like, but the rest of you, I'll give you $20 each. <gasps> $20 for me. Ooh, I could use 20 bucks. Wow, I could buy a house. You could definitely rent one for a few months. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, so she she goes on her way. She goes off to talk to uh, the the uh, foreman again, who you've oh. already had a chat with. Uh, and over the here, the foreman scratching his head and saying, "Alfred Hackett didn't come in today." Um, so now she's anything. Wait, can I can I just talk a minute to the other ones to can we just powwow and let them know that Alfred Hackett is missing and he might have been in the cellar? I'm just checking in to see if Evelyn or Eloise saw him. Alfred Hackett, who was that? It was a man, one of the men who went yeah. to the cellar and disappeared. Disappeared? Well, I think he took one of those eggs with him, and I think we can find him if we go down to the Borden Arms on High Lane. Oh, wow, Ruth, you are such a fast worker. Abby did all the hard work. Now, what's oh. the priority here for you, Abigail? Is it to find an interesting story about where the egg is or to find an interesting story about what the egg is? Uh, I think that we've got a lot of stories here, and I think that we just got to get to the heart of the truth. And whatever is at the heart of the truth is what we're going to print because everyone needs to know first what happened to the fountain, but also these eggs. And I have a question about how many eggs do you think you saw down there? Well, there were five, but, but, but Eloise noticed that there was sort of an imprint left that one had been taken. Five plus a missing egg, okay. Okay. <sighs> And, and we think that this Alfred Hackett might be the answer to the missing egg. Probably Alfred sticky Hackett fingers. Egg. 
That's a story I would read in the pulp books. Alfred and the Missing Egg. Okay, we'll keep it a working title until until the story's done. Meanwhile, okay. something dug some chunks out of the fountain. I, I... Ooh. Oh. Chunks? What kind of chunks? Like with See claws? Those big old, they're, they're about four feet apart. So I don't know what kind of thing could have claws like that. I've never seen a bird that big. Oh. Well, could it have been the impact point of the eggs? Do, are, are they strong enough for that? Well, they look kind of fragile. To, well, it, it's not entirely sure. I'm not. I, I don't know the makeup of the material on the outside. It, it could be that they are sturdy. Yes. I, I will take one quick. Uh, before we are kicked off the premises for my rude and very uh, loud behavior, I would like to take one quick look at the fountain before we go meet this Alfred. Sure. The day you get us kicked out of a joint. All I right. know. Add that to the bucket list, right? <laughs> Evelyn, you want to look around the fountain? I just want to see the scores that um, Ruth was talking about. Sure. They, uh, it looks like just on the rim, there's just been, it, it's as if it was kicked right off just by some powerful, strong object. Um, and mm. those two places on the rim are about four feet apart. Then inside the fountain, there's indentations of um, something with big scratches. Mm. Well, all Artists, right. Did you make anything of this? <laughs> Did you ask the artist? Yeah. No. <laughs> Big scratches? Let me see if I can drum something up. Where are the scratches? <laughs> I was just thinking of About going back to my drive and ordering a, another and glass of whiskey. Big scratches. Mm. Here's yeah. what my artist's eye interprets. That's good. Oh. Oh. Does that seem right? Oh. Excellent. Quite I'm right. going to keep um, these in. Just so you know, Abigail, like, can I call you Abby? I feel oh. like I can just give you these and you can print them if you like. Oh, um, I'd love to have your drawings in there. We could give you a byline. Oh, well, I'm not enough for the byline. Just, I like to spread my art around. Mm. It's an act of charity. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's so, that's so nice. This, and is, do, your, do, this is for you now. Okay, okay. I, I'm going to put it in my prints to put into the paper that we roll out later. Yes. All right. Her Harold in the case of the missing egg, is that? That's Alfred, Alfred, and, uh, Alfred and the missing egg. Yes. Yes. Let's yeah, speaking of which, happen. maybe yeah. we should go look for him? Yeah, we should go do that. I don't see anything mm -hmm. else I can be of help with. Okay, so you guys all, uh, I assume, pile into Eloise's, uh, 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 is it a Studebaker? Yes, it's a Studebaker, it's my nice. father's. Thank and goodness. this is, this wow. is um, this is Albert, my driver. He's so, so nice. Albert, Hi, Albert. can you Albert. get a round of, of um, oh, whiskey on the rocks for oh, everyone? You, oh, you <laughs> like to drink on the job, mm. Eloise. That's oh, I'm right. not on a job. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Fun. <laughs> All cool. right, you guys arrive at the Borden Arms Hotel. It's, it's a crumbling building. The brickwork is falling apart. All the windows you see are, are very small and have their shutters fastened very tightly. Uh, you can tell that no one in this neighborhood has has much to speak of. Um, as you, you uh, knock on the front door, uh, apartment number one, or you go in the front hallway, uh, you see apartment number one has a sign, a plaque that says, landlady. Oh, yeah, does someone want, oh, there, there. Should we talk to him? I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, hello. Uh, who, who might you all be? Hi, ma'am. We're looking for one of your boarders there. Have you seen Alfred today? Oh, uh, Alfred. Alfred, yes. Um, you, this is, uh, she's, she's kind of an off-kilter lady. She sort of waddles as uh, she walks around. You saw her undo the latch of the lock. Uh, she kind of has a, a, a wild stare and um, uh, her dress is as floral print and stained. Uh, well, uh, mm, who's asking? I mean, don't be scared. Like, Nobody's in any trouble. Ruth Leaker, PI. Look, um, people, private investigator. 
Oh, oh my, one of my, one of my tenants. Uh, I, I don't know anything. And uh, she, she seems like she's about to close the door. Does anybody want to give me maybe a persuade? A, oh, a pass um, miss, hi, hi. We are just conducting a routine investigation and you don't have to trouble yourself at all. And in fact, we so appreciate you helping us out. Here's a little bit just for your trouble. And I take out, thank you. I take out some cash from my wallet and I give her $30. Oh, <gasps> oh. That's, that's like $300. I love it. <gasps> yes, oh my. anything you want to know. Well, let me tell you, Alfred, Alfred, he's a nice boy. He's handsome, that one. Um, very hard working. Uh, what else can I tell you? I did hear him leaving this morning. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, well, he he just rushed out. He rushed out in such a hurry. Uh, he had a, a note in his hand, I believe. But well, I guess I could let you into his apartment if you like. Did Just Alfred around? Did he have any callers, uh, any visitors that you can remember? I'm southern all of a sudden. Oh no, <laughs> uh, I can't remember any. I don't remember what accent oh. I started. With. <laughs> uh, I can't remember any visitors lately. That one, he sticks to himself, you know. Always alone, that Alfred. But I don't know. He has kind eyes, if you ask me. Ofta, did you see him holding anything that might have looked like a circular, spherical banana? banana. Or an no, egg? no, no. I mean, I didn't see him when he came home last night. But well, uh, this morning, uh, well, he just he kept, he ran out several times with a note. It seemed. Um, uh, let me take you to his apartment. It's number six up the stairs, and she oh. sort of like waddles ahead of you. But she's Much trying to go very fast because she was very well motivated with this thirty dollars. Um, all right, she lets you into number six, and uh, we have a picture of the apartment. Let's see, it's just a small single room. There's there's a, a thin mattress on a metal frame. It's kind of sagging in the middle, uh, the hot plate in one corner. There's a table, it's pretty shoddy as well. Uh, well, well I keep the furniture in here for tenants that, that, you know, some just passing through town like Alfred, he's on the construction project, you know. Sure, you do what you can. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. If you need anything, you miss, you pretty one. Yeah, with the with the eyebrows and the lipstick and the jewels. And yes. the money. Anything, you come to me. She waddles away. You guys are in Alfred's apartment. As you were Oh, sorry, sorry, let's lose this. Let's lose this. this. Oh, your story. My bad. Here's, here's what she looks like. Oh. Artist's interpretation. Oh. That's exactly what she looks like. So lifelike. <laughs> Wait, is, please. No. Is, is that blood? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What what it what is all of that all, all over the floor? This is uh that's not what you see. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, pretend that's, you didn't see that's that. Oh, that's um, <clears throat> my bad. That's all right. All right. Uh, what do we see so, besides the furniture? I don't care much for furniture. I I I'm more interested in in the other things. Uh, you see, you see, um. You see a table that has the notebook. You see a graphic pencil. What's in the notebook? He said he's had uh, notes, right? Maybe he's ripped some pages out. Can we go yeah, you, in the you, notebook? The last page on top is ripped in half, and half of it's still bound up in the spirals. Ruth. Can I try to, mm-hmm. What's um, down there? Can you do the thing, the thing that you do, the trick, the parlor trick? I want to try to take out one of the blank pieces of paper from elsewhere in the notebook and go over it with the pencil and see if I can reveal any impressions of what was on it. Oh, I love that man. Um, let's see, what should I have you roll for here? I mean, that seems like just a pretty straightforward plan. Let's see, what would get in the way? Dexterity? I'll just let you do it. Uh, Ruth. You sit down at the table and you take the graphite and you rub it back and forth. And slowly you see a note appear. Uh, let me find that note for you, hold on. Okay, uh-oh. 
it just says, Mary, I think it's an egg, but I don't know what kind. Come quick. Mary. The daughter. I don't know what to do oh. if it hatches. Search the room. It might be stashed somewhere. Someone else touch everything. We'll touch everything. We'll touch everything. Don't worry. Cool. I touch everything. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. Cool. Um, can I get a, uh, uh, let's get a spot hidden from everybody. Oh. Or you can tell me where you look. Nope. Oh, <laughs> that was either a very bad roll or a very good one. And it took me a second to realize I got four on a 75. Oh, wow. Uh, How are you getting oh. so many amazing double with single digits? That's incredible. Oh, shit. Ruth, uh, you have a knack for finding things. You are a private detective for a reason. You just innately just know where to look and you drop down to your knees and underneath the uh, very thin frame of this mattress, you see a pot, a cooking pot. And inside it, you pull it out. And in, inside that, it looks like what was one of what you know to be the egg, but it doesn't look like the other ones. No, this egg has been altered. It looks milky and translucent. Mm -hmm. And as if you lift it out of the still mildly lukewarm water, you can see when you hold it up to the light, something swimming around inside. I knew the cellar was not a conducive environment for hatching an egg. It needs a little bit of warmth. This, this young Alfred is quite a smart young man. Um, what, what, um, just check in now. Are we, are we trying to hatch the egg? Is that one of our, um, new missions? Is that, is that something that you're interested in, Evelyn? And I, you know, I totally respect you, respect well, you for all your facts, but what, is that something that we want to do? Well, I don't know what creature is inside of it, but, um, no, I, I suppose there are definitely other departments that should be handling this. Abigail, let me ask you a question. Mm. In your professional opinion, which makes for a better story? Man finds mystery egg or oh. man finds mystery egg hatched and whatever is inside is to be revealed. That's working title for the headline. Oh, but a working title. Okay. Um, man finds Alfred and the mystery egg, which may or may not have hatched. Or mystery egg hatched and then whatever is inside of it. Oh, I think mystery it's egg exciting. hatched ostrich. You're ostrich. losing me a, a, a little bit here, guys. That Those are lovely abstract concerns, but we have, what am I holding? Oh. Um, as I, you hold it, you it see like? something bulge and, and, and move in your hand. Can I have you roll for sanity, Ruth? Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm good with situations, but I'm never, this is unlike um, anything you've ever seen before. It's it seems to be growing before your eyes. Is oh, it crocodile like? Is it is it is it fish like? You said it was swimming. Is I'm can okay. you make out any details of of its appendages or or body shape? Uh, let, give me give me a biology role, or if anybody has that, or maybe just a science role. I can do uh, a science uh, role. There's no biology per se on here. Well, you can do your chemistry. Ruth, uh, how was your sanity roll? Another really low one, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> okay, you're able to sustain. You've seen a lot of things in your days as a PI. No, I have no idea what this thing is. Mm, yeah, it does seem strange. It seems, um, seems very uh, like jagged pointed things are coming out through the edge is what you see Ruth as you hold it up to the light. Uh, it seems like uh, almost like a skeletal frame, like a Ooh. bird almost. Oh, a question about the, the consistency of the egg. Um, does it, it, has the translucentness changed as like the egg is more jelly-like or is it still sort of a hard shell that has now gone clear? 
It's a little more jelly, but there's oh. still like um, uh, it seems like you wouldn't just bounce if you dropped it. There's uh, like this, the texture is slightly softer. And like oh. if you were to dig your fingernails into it, you'd be able to when you weren't before. Hmm. Well, who wouldn't what? normally we call in this situation? And, and I was going to kill I did call you. Well, yes, but I appraise and consult. I have appraised and consulted. Now who do we call? Oh. Well, I want to know where why Alfred left this thing and where Mary is. Well, right then, the door opens uh, as if as someone had been running and it slams wide. <gasps> what are you doing? Who are you? <gasps> Young Penny, <gasps> don't just throw open doors like that. What, what are you doing in my apartment? Oh, hello there. You must be Alfred. Yeah, hello. that's right. And you are Alfred. one, two, so good three, to four. Meet you. We're, um, we're just a team here. And your friend, Mr. Jeffrey Loganfall, uh, uh, said that you might have needed some assistance because he couldn't the, find you. So we were just looking for you because we missed you at the at the mansion today because there was a big fountain that broke and, and we could have really used you there. So we were just checking in to see how you're doing. And we Can I get a that, charm roll to see how he reacts to your speech? Okay. Charm is, is um, let's, Or if you let's, can justify something else like fast talk or persuade. Oh, yeah. Um, nope. I've got a 5% in fast talk, so that's not... Well, I'll, I'll just try charm again because I've got, a, I've got a better chance at the charm. Okay. Okay, charm. I'm trying to do a charm, and I got a, a, a 45, so it's a miserable fail. Miserable fail. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. His eyes so. get wide, and oh. you almost see a vein pop in one of them. He slams the door behind <laughs> him, oh, and he turns there. to Ruth, and he says, Lady, you better give me that right now. Give me one good reason. And by the way, you're fired. <gasps> oh, oh, that, that's know. actually factually yeah, really correct. There, you're in a lot of trouble, young man, and we're here to collect. <laughs> He cracks his knuckles. He, uh, Eloise, do you want to do you want to give me an intimidate? Yes. <laughs> Shit. Um. Okay. 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 Intimidate. Fuck. Okay. No, it didn't work. But as I am saying it, I do take out my wallet again. Oh, oh. I got this okay. endless pocketbook here. Uh, I got, you know, <laughs> 49 um, out of uh, Intimidate 35. He is not a man that can be tempted by money alone. I would, uh, I would just like to say that I start putting my body between his and Ruth because he's making a very physically threatening gesture. And I would like look, to... Ladies, I don't mean you any harm obviously you found my gift for mary okay look i i didn't oh, know what it was i clean. just thought it was beautiful and i i wanted i wanted to share my heart with her and i think your boss's maybe... daughter really that's quite romantic actually you... this could be a really good twist for a rom-com oh. of an article you okay. stole property from her own house to give it to her back as a present oh that's not good what would you do if you was in love with a girl? I, I don't know. I don't have anything to offer I hear some that. people buy rings. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably not the best idea to give her an egg. That might be insulting. Are you, know, you already an item? He doesn't have eggs. Well, no. Well, no. I mean, I've You're seen right her, but she doesn't even know I exist. Why would you she be interested drop in drop off a egg? note? What? You were just gonna drop off a note? Well, yeah, no, I I gave her a note last night after I I got this this thing, and then why should I be telling any of this to any of you? Get out of my house! Well, Mary's a very dear friend, friend of Ab's egg for a gift. Try a diamond. Why an egg in the first place? Th Did you know I something about them arriving? Did you know this was coming? The, the no no I I just well the the lady and the foreman they they told us guys to move them into the cellar and I just I snagged one I, 
I didn't think oh. anyone would notice. That's you notice all the very you saw? precious eggs that there's only six. You thought no one would notice one one's gone. Look, she didn't even seem that interested in first. She just said, get those ugly, stupid rocks out of my fountain and, and get this fixed. And was going on about how much money is it going to take to fix my fountain? I don't know. Uh, I just, look, I don't know who you all are. Can we maybe sit down and talk about this? You, you're holding my egg. And I feel like, and then right at that moment, Ruth, in your hands, the the bulging within the egg seems to have tripled in size in the time that you were holding it. And is it you see a gouge come in the egg. You see uh, it starts to have claws just ripping through uh, just one giant claw. It's almost the size of the whole egg itself and then a second one and put it on the table, put it on the table. Okay, uh, as it, it this creature, this tiny little creature works its way out of its its egg. Can you all please roll for sanity? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a 50 and I rolled a 49. Oh. 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 I have a 45 and I rolled a 79. Okay. What's that mean? And uh, I need I needed everyone to roll, Evelyn and Eloise. You passed? No, I, I've got a Pass. 16 out of 35. Okay. Uh, everyone is, is fine. You're just, you know, you've been to a farm. You've seen something hatch, except for you, Abigail. You did spend time at the lakes in Minnesota, but <gasps> this does not look like anything you've seen before. This oh. yeah, is a foul stench that emerges <laughs> as it bursts free oh. and its claws look like something metallic and, and grotesque and oh. you know, roll for intelligence please and oh, intelligence a roll you would like to fail you would like to roll higher than your intelligence right now. okay higher than my intelligence okay so i've mm -hmm. got a i'm pretty smart i've got a i've got a 65 so i'm rolling and i i, I get a um i get a I get a 55. Mm, okay. Is then that good? Did I, did I? three of sanity. Oh, no. Lucky you. Oh, dear. Uh, D3 is a D6 cut in half and rounded oh, down. So you lose oh, one sanity. Oh, skedazzle. So now I'm at 44. Okay. Okay. I hope I don't go insane. <sighs> wow. Yo, that, 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 that egg, there's something up with that egg. I can't, I can't, I don't want to, I think we need to back away. I think we all need to get outside of the building. I don't, I don't think this is safe. Maybe we should chuck it into a very deep hole or something. You, are you talking about endangering a living creature? Abby? Okay, but this is an normal egg. Not. I've seen things in Minnesota. But my brothers, Ted, Ned, and Fred, they saw an egg like this. And then Fred was never right after it. Why, Abby, the story's just getting good, my dear. This is where we need to pursue it the most. This is exactly where we're, we're close to having answers. I'm interested in finding out what happens, aren't you? I'm interested in us not getting eaten by whatever this is. I'm gonna swoop up something. Uh, is there a second table that I can sort of wield in between us and the thing? Uh, Ruth, I have a gun. There's a lamp. There's uh, another pot on the hot plate. I'm gonna grab the second pot, but also- uh, Or it's like a You have a gun? Oh yes, any woman of good breeding knows how to shoot. Some you of us are bad have a breeding too. You rifle. So, did you bring it up inside, uh, or or is it still in the car with uh, Albert? It's with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need you to roll for stealth <laughs> that the landlady didn't call you out for trying to walk in her building with a rifle. Maybe you know, thirty dollars. A rifle. She didn't see me have a giant rifle with, but I will. Let's see, stealth. Wait, okay. is this you just in your back the, pocket? Yeah, the, the rifle I to your hip. Your pocket. Listen, a lady never asks another lady where she stores her rifle. Oh, oh I ask. <laughs> is that a rifle in your pocket? Are you happy to see me? Well, I did a terrible job. So, no, I got a 94 out of uh, <laughs> <laughs> 20. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> I got the crying it. pan though. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> in my car, should should I go need it? I have a rifle in my car. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Okay, so uh, you see, you see Alfred go over to the table, and he gently just leans down and, and puts out his big, strong hand, and uh, this creature oh. makes a guttural, terrible, tiny little noise, and crawls oh. into his hand. It's oh. got. It's got claws that look like cat claws attached to human hands, but the claws don't retract. And it's got a, a, sort of like a, a bat when they're hanging upside down, you know, and their wings are small and wrapped in small black leathery wings uh, on its back. And its head kind of looks like a tiny horse, but it's got huge, jagged teeth, but all within the, the palm of a, a large man's hand. Fascinating. You probably shouldn't let that thing touch you. It, we don't know what sort of diseases it might contain. Listen, Fred, you, I, I don't know who you are. You look very smart, but Thank you. I think this thing came to me for a reason. and By stealing I, it. I'm supposed came to keep it for it. Uh, and also, well, I'm waiting for Mary. Uh, I think she's going to come here. I mean, I mean, this is this is what they look for in Miskatonic. Strange happenings, right, at the university? Would you sell it for $200? No. No? Absolutely not. Uh, uh, do you have You're ringing it's messing with his brain. Well, uh, that, that is the reward for returning the thing that was in the egg. Uh, then maybe you could get- It was um, $20. Mary, oh, I apologize. <laughs> Which is approximately, uh, it's approximately like, um, uh, that's probably around $400. Maybe Wait, you could get Mary a ring or something anyway, if you okay. wanted. Sorry, what's that? 20. Maybe you could get um change it if you're not feeling paternal affection for it already. With um, don't you could get the uh, uh um a reward and then and then buy Mary um something else like um like an engagement proposal ring, not a proposal egg. Mm -hmm. Or some well, flowers. Guess, uh, or flowers. <laughs> sure. What do you want with it? Oh, I don't know. I think we should destroy it because I think Fred um, saw a, a, a horse with with bat wings that also had jagged teeth. He just what? he just kept drawing pictures of it when we were children and drawing it in the snow. So we were all drawing snow angels, and he was drawing a a, a horse with bat wings and jagged teeth. Abigail, what is your brother? Fred? My brother. Mm -hmm. I had Ned, Ed, and Fred, and Fred saw this 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 egg creature growing up, and and then he was never the same. Never you have same. a connection with this egg, and you oh, I don't. Eggs. But my well, brother Fred does. does. Yes, we we it's 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 with that's why I'm scared. The plot that is thickens, my dear. Yes, I'm with Eloise. The plot does indeed get more viscous. It doesn't, <laughs> but the plot getting viscous could lead to eternal damnation of the mind, of losing sanity. All right. Uh, Let's not get carried away. This is just some kind of weird critter, and I'm sorry for what happened at the farm, but we got to deal with what's right in front of us, and what's right in front of us is Alfred getting his, his brain pan messed with. Why do you? Why are you trying to keep the little weird thing that fell on the construction site? Uh, well, uh, when you put it that way, I don't know. I'm not a smart guy. I just got a feeling I'm I'm supposed to take care of this thing and and protect it and and I don't know. Maybe 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 love it and. Uh, oh, that's kind of um, sweet now. My dear, He's you're not gonna, gonna have to put aside those paternal instincts for a moment because this is a real investigation with a very real press situation, and so we're going to need to look further, and we can take it from here. Okay, you're gonna try and forcibly remove the creature? Forcibly remove? No, no, he wants to give us the egg. Listen, he already knows that he took it for some weird idea to give to a woman that he loves. We know women prefer emeralds and rubies and diamonds instead. And now it's feeling some sort of like 
paternal instinct towards it? No. I want no. you to roll and see if you can convince him in any way, whether that's fast talk or charm or persuade. Okay. Um, ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use persuade or charm because um, I don't have persuade and I got a 50 out of 55. Oh. You got a 50 out of 55? No, 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 or opposite, opposite. I rolled a 50, yes, I rolled a 50 and I have a 55. Awesome. Well, you what, what, okay, great. Uh, well, I guess, well, ma'am, you seem to know what's best. But, yes. Well, I, I won't have anything for Mary then. I mean, I guess I, I could I could take you up on your kind offer of offering me a reward, and then and then I could. <gasps> Just then, he's got the thing in his hand, and he screams the most guttural cry you've ever heard. Ah! As you look down, his thumb is gone. There's a stump. <gasps> where it used to be and the creature is in his hands chewing, chewing happily. <gasps> Everyone roll for sanity one more time as you see gore. It splatters all your faces even though it's just a thumb. I failed. Oh. I also failed. He's bleeding? You guys failed your sanity? Okay. Uh, I got an 80, so that's a fail, right? All right. Out of 45. Uh, I passed my sanity someone. check, but I do have um, a fear of blood and... <gasps> oh, a deep oh, fear. Okay. Phobia. Um, I, I don't say. know how that affects because I did pass the score, but I... I'm going to need you to roll again for your fear of blood. Okay. Uh, and then anybody that failed, uh, please roll a D6, and that's how much damage you're going to lose. Okay, I failed that roll. <gasps> Minus a four. What kind of damage? Four. Sanity. <gasps> Sorry, sanity. Uh, you're losing okay. sanity points. I got a Ugh. one on the D6, so I'm just down one, right? Yeah. Uh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> Wait. Uh, if you pass your failed. sanity roll, you didn't have to lose any If points. you lose more than five points at a time, you go, you have a a, a, a break, right? Voluntary reaction, yeah. Yeah. Well, that- Oh, I you got a six? <laughs> oh, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth, you've got to keep a level head now. Ruth, your instincts are to protect and to throw yourself in harm's way. You are scrappy and you get to the bottom of anything. Uh, so Ruth, when you see this happen, you just scream and you lunge toward the creature involuntarily. It's just your instinct to protect and you grab it away from his bleeding hand. Uh, and then I'm gonna need you to uh, roll for, for fighting brawl. And then uh, the creature is also gonna roll for fighting brawl, but it's, it's a newborn, so it's not very strong. Uh, All right. I've got 35 on that. Can I spend luck to make it better or do I wait to see if I fail first? Uh, was that a fail for you? Well, I haven't rolled it yet. I, oh, sorry, you're 35. Yeah. Uh, no, you can spend luck afterwards. Okay. <sighs> I don't know that anything's going to help me. I got a 79 on my 35. Oh. And uh, the creature got an extreme success. So even though <gasps> it's very small, it takes a Bite out of the center of your palm. Oh! <gasps> Ruth! Uh, can can you, I push? Let's, see, let's have you roll for damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to roll a d4. I know what medicine and then first uh, I, I rolled a d4 and it was a four. So you lose four HP. Right. Little ding dong. Oh. Um, can I, I would can like. I I want to bandage the wound. I, I know lots about medicine. It doesn't really bother me. Disgusting things on the human body. I've seen it all. Okay. Um, uh, and at this point, Alfred is is on the ground, just holding his thumb and rocking back and forth. Uh, uh, get over <laughs> here. Used to be a thumb. I, I demand them both to get closer so that I can do this. Okay. What do you guys do with the creature? I want to brawl it? the creature for... 
So, you want to fight it? I mean, I just want to get it. It's tiny, right? I just want to get it yeah, off of the pot. It bit a hole in her hands. She has the we need her. All right. Uh, before you do, uh, you guys, uh, as Ruth is screaming in pain with a, uh, you can almost see through, there's so much gore coming out of the middle of her hand. Uh, if you hold it up to the light, it's, oh. it's, uh, you can, you can definitely see the light and, uh, and oh. Alfred is rocking back and forth. I imagine you drop the creature to the ground and it's just, it's skittered underneath the bed and it's hiding in the corner as these two people are screaming. The landlady comes up and she pounds on the door and she says, keep it quiet in there. I don't care how much money you have. And as all this is happening, we're going to take a five minute break. <laughs> oh, so much blood already. Oh my God. Everybody hold tight. Don't go anywhere. We are coming back in exactly five minutes. Please enjoy.
Hello and welcome back to the Calyx. I hope you all are having a good time. We're gonna get right back into our story. I just wanted to say that we've been giving away some gifts that we got from Chaosium and Call of Cthulhu and we've already given away three uh, PDFs of, I believe it's the Doors to Darkness uh, scenarios for starting keepers, of which we are doing one right now uh, called Ties That Bind. So uh, we've sent out, and uh, we will be sending out to the first three winners, <gasps> uh, Rain, Spectrum Games, what up, Caitlin, and Lonely Yeti 312. Uh, so congratulations to you winners. And now let's get back into it. We have Ruth Bleeker, who is bleeding from the palm, Abigail Formosa, the journalist, uh, Elise Dorman, the socialite who's afraid of blood, and Evelyn Ward, who is just about to bandage up. Uh, both Ruth and Alfred Hackett, who uh, couldn't hack it, not having his <laughs> thumb hacked off. I don't know. Sorry, trying. Wow, not the time for jokes, Keeper. No, oh, this is a serious no, it certainly situation. Isn't. It certainly is not, Eloise. Man, this is my punching can. arm. I did lose a, a one point in sanity. I rolled well, but um, is there by any chance a window that overlooks the Studebaker? Uh, there is a window. Yeah, it does. It does face uh, the street out front. I would like to run over and open the window and yell down to Albert to fetch my rifle. Okay. Okay. Uh, can can you? Uh, let's see. Let me roll and see if he's still there. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Hey there. <laughs> let me decide before I roll it. Ooh, no, uh, he is there. He is there. <clears throat> Miss. Uh, and uh, he uh, goes around to the trunk. You see him open it, pop it, and grab the rifle. And Alfred, walk it. Er, not Alfred. Albert, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. We, we have an animal can, to contain. <laughs> we should shoot it, right? We should shoot him. Uh, my God. My God. Oh, jeez. Uh, 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 Just calm down. Have it back together I'm, again, or I'm, am I still out of it? Uh, you're in the scene. Yeah. No. How? Well, what's your total hit points? Uh, eight. Uh oh. Oh Did no. You that before. Oh, so it was twelve. Four. That was Makes that a major wound. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I had twelve, and now I have eight. Excellent. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, if you had lost more than half your total hit points, then you would have suffered a major wound. You'd need to roll for constitution to see whether or not you pass out. Um, yeah, you're good. You're good. Hey, you can don't let me get that back right now uh, with a, a, a roll from Gina because you were about to roll yes. for either first aid or medicine. Uh, I'm assuming yeah, first aid as, as medicine is usually diagnosis and, and we know what caused. The injury. I think it would be first aid, but I would be generous if you had a preference. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I have, I have um, equal. I, I'm both studied and in practice. So, um. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, if you uh, perform first aid successfully, you get to heal one point of damage, and if you uh, perform medicine successfully, you get to heal one d three points. Uh, I don't know if you have any medicine oh, on. Your I do patient. actually have medicine on me. Oh, do you? Yes, at all times. <laughs> Can you tell us what you have? Oh, um, it's sort of um. Well, I don't like germs. Do you have a big carpet bag over your shoulder? Uh, it, it's more like a pocket bag. I I have a larger bag with with bigger items that you know of, but but not on me. Those would have stayed in the car. Um, I didn't think they were necessary, but but on my person at all times, I do keep medicine. Um, uh. Penicillin and the like hasn't been invented yet, but, well, but I do have okay. some sort of antibiotics. You've got um, heroin, cocaine, all oh. wrapped up in tonics. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah you've got plenty. It's sort of, you well, just, just it's whichever it's one drop like. under the tongue kind of deal and then have a fun time. Oh, Fun time in health. And I okay, just, uh, go ahead and give um, me a roll for, for uh, whichever one you prefer. Medicine's fine. That's oh, okay. I got a 13 and my, my number is a 50. So I think that's a big success or whatever. It's oh, called. yeah. That's a, definitely a hard success. Hard success. That's the word. Uh, okay. Um, so roll 1d3 and we can round up on this one. 
And that's how much Amy gets to heal. Okay. One D three. A D three? I don't have a D three. Uh, a D six. Okay. And then you divide by two, but I'll let you round up. I rolled a five. Ooh, okay. So you gain back three points. <laughs> wow, Evelyn Ward is incredible. You uh, you have a a, a small um a small vial with uh, alcohol and a syringe that you can uh, put. We're, we're saying penicillin's not existent yet. Okay, you just pour some some morphine into those. There's some antibiotic. We, there's still some sort of antibiotic, uh, uh, antibacterial cream uh, ointment sort of a mm -hmm. uh, sort of thing. Um, you got like the best hands. Up you do. Ill. Um, oh. Steady hands and, and, and weak immune systems, they, they come in handy sometimes. And all right. Uh, while all this is happening, Alfred just stumbled up to his, his little kitchenette, just a hot plate in a cabinet. And uh, he, he found a roll of gauze he had in there and he's wrapped it around his thumb. And he says, ladies, maybe it's best if you, you take this thing. I don't, I, geez, I don't even know if I want it anymore. Um, you know, I'm taking your pot, okay? Just, I'm gonna try to trap the thing in the pot. Can you hold okay. it? Okay, great. Uh, as that's that? happening, you guys have been here for a while. It's it's around three o'clock now, and this is right around when afternoon classes begin to let out, or morning classes let out before the university has their afternoon classes. And uh, so, uh, through the door bursts Mary Carrington, and she's oh, not no. alone. Oh. Uh, uh, hello? I received a, a note to come here. Um, oh, Eloise, Evelyn, Mary. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing here, my love? Uh, and also, have you seen my driver? Okay. He was supposed to be up here several minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> yes, actually, Albert uh, is standing right behind them in the open door. And by them, I mean, it's not just Mary Carrington with her long, dark, wavy brown hair uh, into finger waves and her kind eyes, uh, completely the opposite of her mother, Enid. Um, she's also brought with her uh, a tall man. Uh, he's wearing he's wearing a very professorial brown tweed coat and uh, very tan skin, blue eyes. Oh, I'm so sorry, ladies. Uh, this is Dr. Bryden and well, Al and Albert, your driver, I suppose. Al is that a rifle? Albert, yes, my rifle, please. Um, just one moment, Mary. Will we just have a it over. Oh, um, um, to attend to? Do you mind waiting outside for a moment? Um. Well, uh, and Al Albert, uh, Alfred says, no, 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 no. Come in, come in, uh, please. Alfred. There we go. Uh, this is, there's something that I wanted to show you and it has a student of Miskatonic. Who's this? Uh, and, and they come inside and, and Albert, uh, Alfred are, shuts the door on Albert. Um, there are a lot of people in this room now. There's Your weird room. friend found something for you that he intended to give you as a gift. I'm just gonna cut right through it. He has a, uh, he's keen for he's you. He's sweet on you. He's sweet on you. And he got you a very weird gift that we're trying to, you notice that he's missing his thumb? Well, we're trying to solve that right now. Don't touch it. Yeah, he, he I, I know. Yes, I know all this. Yes, I mean, uh, this is the letter that, that I received. Um, uh, Alfred, I, I'm so sorry, but, I just don't feel the same way about you. Uh, and, and Mary hands over the letter oh. that she received. Oh, uh, I, I asked uh, I, Mary. Here, does someone want to read it aloud? Uh, uh, I, yeah, oh. okay. And then I want to take it to put maybe in the ask if it's a for, for evidence in a paper article. Yes, everything here forth is evidence and it belongs to the press. I'm just going to say that. This okay. is for you. Well, don't write anything my mother would be upset about. Dearest Mary, I don't think you even know me, but I know you, creepy. Uh, you see, I work on your house. I'm not a gentleman like you deserve, but I'm a good man with strong hands and a good heart. Ooh, 
This should go in the pulp version of this. You may think this is sudden, but I have come to care for you. I've seen you and watched you when you came to the site, also creepy, and I wanted to see you again. I have a gift for you that I would like to bring to your dormitory tomorrow. It's a jewel of some kind. It's an egg that we found when we are building your house, and it is really pretty like a giant fancy pearl. This poor man, and it is really pretty, like a giant fancy pearl. And you are studying Miskatonic University. I, University. I thought you would think it was interesting. I will be at my room at the Borden Arms tonight and tomorrow, so you can reach me there with dearest affection, Albert Hackett, the dope. It's a good letter. Oh, it's not a good letter. No, Don't this is it. the most embarrassing way this could ever happen for me. You deserve uh. to be embarrassed. You're a small Alfred sits and he studies his, his wrapped hand as the gauze continues to oh. fill with blood. Um, you should probably sit down and uh, keep it Mary, elevated. Mary takes a seat. <laughs> she thinks you're talking to her. Oh. Um, um, uh, the, the professor speaks up. Pardon me, ladies. I don't you? mean to interrupt, but I heard that there was some sort of um, creature. Under there. Uh, yes, there is some sort of creature at Erringer to two of our party so far. That's why the rifle is here. Would you like to help? More than anything. Oh, I've wanted to make a discovery like this. And he has a big uh, medical bag with him. He sets it down. He opens it up and he pulls out two big leather gloves. They almost look like um, like a, a, like a uh, bird keeper would have. And he pulls them on. Oh, and Oh goes rooting around looking for a falconer. Yes, great word. Um, oh Evelyn, I'm going to need you yes. to give me a roll because you have a fear of not being able to breathe. And that sounds an awful lot like claustrophobia. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, room. seven people in a small one room What's with a, a bed in it. I've backed all the way up against the wall. <laughs> Without touching it. sanity. Yes. It's just going to be one point of loss if you fail it. I succeed. Okay, great. You're. This is pretty commonplace. People like to crowd around, and I. It's, oh. <laughs> uh, excellent. All right. Um, Can I get a read on this guy? Sure. Do you want to give me a psychology roll? Um, I have a 60 there, but it won't help because I got an 86. Oh. You uh, try to read him and you get nothing but like uh, just obtuse feelings. You're like, I have no idea whether his intentions are pure or he's trying to hook up with Mary or I'm trying to hook up with you or, or just trying to steal this weird bird thing and get out. Oh. Not big on snobs in general, so. He Can I said just be up front with him and ask him some questions? Uh, sure. Oh, um, Mr. Mr. Professor or a doctor, depending Please. on what time. I'm Dr. Carl Bryden. Dr. Carl Bryden, okay. Yes, um, are you writing an article? I am, as a matter of fact, and I, um, Dr. Carl, I'll just call you that. Um, so what's your experience with uh, uh, killing the um, winged uh, horse creatures with jagged teeth? We're not gonna kill anything. I'm a professor of biology. I'm well reputed. I've written many articles. No, 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 no. I, in fact, if you wouldn't mind, I would like it to be noted that, well, I would I would like to be the first researcher of this new species. He says with, with a, a, a horrific awe of this thing as it, as it sits on his gloved hand and it tries to gnaw a little bit at the edge of the glove and no, 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 no. Little guy, oh, that's so cute. Uh, and oh. it can't bite through it. Okay, so it's just sitting there on his glove. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and it. we're all okay with this. Is this, it's tamed at the moment? It just can't uh, bite it's, through uh, the leather. Looks like it was just playing around in the first place. It's kind of, I don't, I don't know if you'd call it a purr, but it's sort of making a, a strange <laughs> sound and oh. rubbing itself in in his glove it seems to be full for the moment it, it was hungry before Doc, what are we before. looking at here yes well uh, 
and let me take some notes. And he goes and he sits down at the table and he starts writing uh, exactly what he sees. I mean, uh, what we see here is, uh, uh, it's a creature about the size of a kitten. Uh, these are the notes that he's taking. He obviously uh, takes this very seriously. And uh, it's a lot of what you already know. It has claws that are non-retractable and, um, very complex bone structure like a bird, lots of many, many bones you can see and it's, you know, bat-like wings. And uh, yeah, basically he's writing down everything you've seen and he doesn't seem to know much more than you guys already just observed, but he is um, documenting it. And he also, also... It says this has the texture of scales, but is not scales, it's just... Yeah, it's sort of like a leathery, leathery, dry skin, uh, but uh, but okay. so tough that it's almost. Yeah, you oh. also see he draws this sketch of the little guy. Yeah, well, I see the yeah. sketch. If you ask me, a pro professional s sketch woman, it's no good. I can you, do. You would like to do your own, and I will. <laughs> and by the way, doctor. I don't know if you have looked around, but there are several competent women in this room. We have a PI, we have a journalist, and we have someone who isn't a doctor, but definitely damn well should be. So if you're trying to look at this creature and get your own sort of discovery, I suggest you look elsewhere, buddy, because this is our, this is our thing. And you can help, but you are not gonna take our story because we've got a pretty goddamn good pulp story going right now. Mary, Mary, you said that you said you promised to me and he turns to Mary. He, he's, he's screaming at her and she's she's sort of trying to calm him down. And Eloise, well, this is this is his livelihood. I, I mean, couldn't you just well, let him claim the discovery? I mean, he is the professor of biology after all. Well, I have no horse Does in the race, but maybe some more you should ask the journalists getting... and the doctors and the and the PI who came here first. By the way, here's my drawing. Oh, oh, I would like to use a combination of the two for the paper just to give alternate perspectives. Okay, uh, we can fight about the I credit later. I would love later, to but... give you my drawing in the paper along with my write up of this new, uh, uh, I'm going to call it a, 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 a Bryden, Bryden's creature. Oh, okay, well, I think Ruth has some important questions here, and she's got a hole in her hand, so we should let her go. I like how you, up. Do you want me to take a look at that? It's It's been seen to, but if you got any more gloves, we'll take them. Is anybody else worried about why weird horse monsters are falling out of the sky into fountains? Me, I, I am. I am. Yes. Mary, what do you know about this? Hi. You're Mary, the daughter? Yeah. Hi, hi, Mary. Uh, I'm so sorry we haven't met, and I apologize if you, well, have had to deal with my mother. She can be quite a bit. I can't, I can't help but crack a smile at that one. Um, not generally inclined towards the rich people, but Mary seems all right. Uh, all right, so what, what are we dealing with here? What do you know I about this? Know. How did you know to call this guy? Oh, well, <laughs> Carl, <laughs> I mean, Dr. Bryden, I... I take all of his classes and, well, I don't know, doctor, doctor, um, we were just chatting after class and, well, he walked me back to my dormitory. And, well, he was standing outside my dormitory. Oh, you guys I, have I a would not walk between you. Back. You've got, mm -hmm. you guys have a little romance. Who? sorry. Oh, no, the, the doctor up. butts in. I'm sorry, I could never with a student and Mary looks very upset with this. Oh, but you were waiting outside her dormitory like a creepy stalker. No, am I, I? I'm just getting the facts. He turns and looks to his uh, papers and just keeps writing. Oh. Hmm. What does okay. the creature look like? It, it seemed to get quite large quite quickly while in the egg. Is it growing exponentially the same it outside? Like it's, yeah, it looks exactly like what Eloise sure. is holding oh. up. I just meant um, size-wise. Is it growing continuously or it is it steady seem... in its growth pattern? Uh, it, it seems to be a little more steady, but well, maybe you could uh, roll for what would that be? Uh, spot hidden. Okay. No. Mm, you can't oh. tell if it's got. I don't like this room anymore, and these people are starting to annoy me. 
Listen, Dr. Bryden speaks up. Ladies, 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 I understand that um, you probably have a vested interest in this. And I promise that tomorrow I would be more than happy to share any of my notes with you. I, I, I plan to stay with the creature all night, uh, Mr. Hackett, if that's all right with you. Uh, the three of us will just stay in the room. And ladies, well, maybe we can reconvene. We're not in the leaving morning. Mary alone with you and Alfred in this dingy apartment. No offense, mine isn't so great either. But you must be out of your mind. Absolutely. I. I mean, well, Carl, Doctor, um, I. I wouldn't mind, but well, I don't know if it's exactly my purview. We were hired you first. Want to stick around for the rest of the night and oh. uh, see what happens to the creature? Do you maybe want to explore somewhere else? Well, oh. I would like to point out that there are several more of these back at Edith's home who, the poor thing, she thinks that she's gonna make some kind of money off of this, but she could be in real danger. And so could we. And so I think we put it down gently with a rifle and then use its body to figure out exactly what it is and then maybe go and, I don't know, to do something with the rest of them because poor Edith. Oh, I'm on team Eloise. There is no way I would let you harm this creature. This is a new species. And yes, perhaps if we found more, we would like to dissect them, but well, there's so much to study while it's still alive before there we get to that. There are more. We know that there are more because they were stolen. This is one of five that was stolen by Alfred, and this one has injured two of our party. And so I don't mm -hmm. particularly care if it dies or not. We well, would like for it to not injure us anymore. Hey, uh, Dr. Carl, what if we just throw it in the freezer? That way it can't harm anybody. And it, we have an ice box. I, 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 I guess, can we go back? Is, it, is there an ice box in our... Um, Ma'am, I wish I had an ice box, but it's just not that kind of that kind, kind of apartment. I mean, I just oh. rented it like this. We we don't have an ice box. I just have a hot plate there. Oh, we could put it on a hot hand. plate. We could put it on the hot plate and put the pot over it, like Ruth was saying. Cook? You want to cook it? But, I'm just saying we could hold it momentarily on the fire plate. It seems to be pretty well controlled by the doctor with his two gloves. He seems to, it seems to have had its fill of eating flesh for the moment. Emily, um, hey. I'm just thinking they get yes. hungry. Ruth, please Wait. join me in my corner. I'm going to duck into the corner for just a minute. Evelyn, um... So if there's like a baby, right? And like yes. maybe five more babies. Yes. And like big, big, deep, gougy kind of marks. Yes. Does this thing have a mama? It's mostly, I mean, statistically, yes, something gave birth to it. Is that um, thing coming back to the old lady's house? Oh dear. Um, it depends on if the species is quite territorial of their young. Some some don't, such as turtles. You know, they're sort of laid and then left to their own devices. But but I'm not sure the creature itself may be territorial of its eggs, and it also may not be. So maybe a giant monster's coming. They may back. be terribly endangered. Yes, but also I maybe not. A few hours have passed since you guys have been here bandaging wounds, studying the creature, going back and forth. Should you shoot it with the rifle? Should you not? And you're seeing that the sun is just beginning to lower in the sky. We should call Enid. Yes, we should call Enid with our telephones. Do you have oh, a telephone? I'm really sorry, ladies, but uh, oh, I don't have a phone. I, I think the when landlady the might- phones invented? The landlady will have something. The landlady has a phone. You just got to ask her. She charges a nickel per call, though. Okay. Oh. Eloise has got it. I'm I've sure. Got it. Um, I, I think a giant monster might be coming for Enid. Very sorry, yeah. Mary. I just want to put that out there. I would like to get on the phone. Um, oh. Where's a place that we can go that has a phone? Um, we can travel to my house and I can call Enid. We could go directly back to Enid's. Um, but I think that I should warn her that she's potentially in the presence of some dangerous creatures. If you could warn her, I would appreciate that so much. I, I think I really should stay with Dr. Bryden and help in case he needs anything. I mean, water or, or shoes or a bottle of liquid. You want us to take Alfred? 
Oh, ladies, I think I got a, a, this is my apartment, you know, so uh, are you going I'm to gonna stay here and see uh, maybe if Mary needs anything like, uh, well, if she wants a water, if, you know, she wants some moonshine. Oh, I see. Well, we're going to leave... sort that out. We're going to leave Mary with the two boys that love her. Okay. Okay. Uh, see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Reporter, I, uh, please don't write this in your story, but it, it's okay. perfectly fine. We've I mean, got a new my... working yes, title, Mary and the Two Men. <laughs> and the Dragon Devil. Uh, that would be dreadful. Dear, I mean, there's no, there's no reason to drag my name through the mud. I, I'm oh. going to stay here, and that's that. Please change the name of your story. Little it's Mud Never Hurt Nobody. Title. Uh, uh, She's not leaving, and neither are the guys. Uh, uh, they they want to stay by the creature. So, are you guys going to go use the landlady's phone, or do you want to go back to the construction site? Uh, I just want to pontificate out loud as to why on earth the professor wants to conduct his study in a non contained environment instead of a lab that would be at the university or my home. Are you asking him? Yes. I am pontificating loudly at his face. Why on earth would you what, want to conduct yourself? What your kind study? of facilities do you have? Well, several. I've built my own lab, but but don't you have one at the university? Why would you want to conduct yourself? Certainly, your study I here? mean, we're a short walk from the university. If you'd like to head that way, we could head to my laboratory. I just, well, the creature's here, and I don't really want to see many people see us walking about until I've got something published. But. Well, if if you'd like to do that, I well, I suppose we could all go to my laboratory. In fact, I would love to go out and get a bite to eat. That seems odd, given the... Uh, all right, new plan. I hate this plan, but go to my home. This is the address. We're going to set up in my laboratory, and I have a kitchen, so we do not have to take breaks and go outside. Deal? We work together. Uh, Okay, okay. Uh, how are you going to get seven of you there, though, with just the Studebaker? Does they how, how much does the Studebaker There are no laws in 1925. We can all just pile in. Okay, you all... Uh, Wait, uh, I, would like to, I would like to make a call with the landlady yeah. at this moment and call up Enid because... Yeah. Uh, hanging sure. out with okay, guys. so as you go to do that, Alfred actually has a problem with this plan. He gets in front of the door before anyone leaves. Wait right here. I brought this thing into my home, and I invited you all. Well, not you four, but I invited you two in, and, and no one and no one can take this thing out uh, without me, and I don't want it to leave. So maybe we're all to persuade him or charm him, but he, he's hard to charm when, his, when Mary's in the room. Can I not intimidate him? Sure, you can intimidate him. This has been ridiculous. This entire scenario is ridiculous. The amount of people that you have in your home at this hour of day in a with a creature that is undiscovered and all you care about is keeping it here? You're pathetic! Be a man! Just as and, you oh. say, pathetic, he drops his head and starts to starts to think about the words you're saying and uh, then the 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 creature the creature starts to squawk uncontrollably in Dr. Bryden's hands it, it's moving around it's trying to get up his arm and bite his arm and it's squawking and squawking and ah! and it's trying to move and trying to even extend its tiny little bat wings and then a crash comes through the window. The glass shatters and in through the window comes a huge black creature, scaly with giant bat wings. It's almost seven feet tall, but it crunches itself down to fit through the double window. It's just broken and glass shards fly at all of you, and, and you feel them on your face. You feel the blood start to trickle down everywhere you were hit by glass. And this horse's head, it's, it's, its head is the size of, of twice a horse's head, but has that long elongated jaw with scissoring teeth even. Imagine 10 times, 20 times the size of the baby you've been dealing with and you saw the way that that 
baby bit off Alfred's thumb. I have my rifle now. And you have your rifle. And as uh, you lift it up before you can even load the shots, uh, it goes, it sees Dr. Bryden holding its baby. He stands up, it walks over, it puts one hand of its giant humanoid-like hand, but with long claw talons on his shoulder and the other one on top of his head, and it plucks it out. Everybody has been shoved to the side as it walked through the room and on the beds and on the floor and, and blood splatters everywhere. His body still standing up as blood spurts from the hall where his neck used to be. Everyone is in shock for a moment. What do you do? Um, I, I would like, <laughs> I think it's, I think there is a buffer. I would like to run. Um, I don't think that there's a, um, I don't think we're adequately equipped at the moment to deal with a, uh, apparently the mother dragon horse bat teeth. So I would like to go and convince as many people as we can to go. I have my gun and so I'm going to use it. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's I mean at this point blood is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna need everyone to roll for sanity. Oh. Uh I'm gonna need two rolls from Whitney because uh of your fear okay. of blood. Okay, the first one I got a two. Ah, second one, I got a five. Four. Bitch is keeping it together. That's that's, that's two oh. incredible rolls in a row. Okay. Wow. okay. I got a 51, so I don't think I'm doing too well. Is that above your sanity? Um, My sanity is a 43 at the moment. Okay, so I need you to roll a D6 if you have it. Okay. We can't push these, can we? Uh, a sanity roll cannot be pushed. All right. No. Well, then my uh, 95. Oh, ha, ha, ha. oh, that's terrible. I got a three. So I'm now, I'm now, I'm now 40. I'm going to need you to roll. Uh, do you have a D8? Oh, no. that's because that's a critical failure. Oh, e. oh, Ruth. Ruth. I'm normally good with unflappability situations, but they're not normally monsters. I don't oh, even man. believe in monsters. This is ridiculous. Okay. A one? Okay, so you lose one sanity. Steph, how much sanity did you lose on the D6? Oh, I lost three. Okay, so you bring your sanity down three. Evelyn, Boy. how'd you do on your sanity? I got a six, so I'm doing quite well. It's blood and creatures, oh, wow. but, you know, I've read a lot of stories. You're yeah, and you, like you've... Well. You've read a lot of medical journals and yeah. you've seen descriptions of surgeries. So yeah. watching a man's head ripped off his body as his body hovers there but teeters before it begins to fall. That doesn't yeah. face you. And Louise, I imagine yeah. you probably have dropped to the bed and covered your eyes because of your fear of blood. And, and that's why you get away uh, with your sanity so far. Alfred. I'm keeping it together because my fight or flight instincts are together, but I'm still trying to shoot this motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, um, typically your dexterity is going to determine our fighting order, but if you have a firearm, that precedes any dexterity. So, you can go ahead and I want you to roll for firearms. Okay. What dice is uh, that? For the rifle one. I think there's both pistol and rifle. Under, uh, it's right under fighting on the second column. Oh, I don't have anything in my sheet there. Oh wait, rifle. Okay, and the second column. Mine says regular. regular. You're at you're at very close range, yeah. uh, and it is a rifle. But you were prepared and ready to shoot the baby, so I'm gonna not give you a penalty die for being in such close quarters. Although I'm tempted. You can just well, give me a regular roll. I just rolled a two, so. That's an extreme. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me see what I wrote down for your rifle. 
And you can write this in if you would like to uh, on weapon at the bottom of your character sheet. You have a 22 bolt action rifle and its damage is 1d6 plus one. You have six bullets in your magazine and you just spent one of them. I was say, Ruth had some doubts about Eloise at the start of this encounter, but Ruth is very impressed. <laughs> moment to Eloise moment. Eloise is re impressive. Mm. Let's I'm see how much damage impressed. you do. To support. I know that this monster doesn't respond to cash, so we're going to have to try some. <laughs> 1d6 plus 1, you said? Uh-huh. This website that you sent me has the option of rolling two d6 i got you i'll one. roll a d6 for you okay yeah and i believe you can change it to just one on the side there here we go i got a d6 ready yeah nope not that one <laughs> <laughs> it fell off the table <laughs> it's a four so you deal five damage to this thing that is a good shot but it's a body shot do you want to describe to me what happens well, I'm close range and blood is everywhere. And so I take my rifle and I kind of just shoot it aimlessly. My instincts kick in because I'm well trained. And so it hits it right in, in the shoulder, which maybe could have possibly hit an artery, I'm hoping, um, or at least wounded it enough for us to get out in time. Um, but I know that it hasn't put it down fully. Excellent, okay. It squawks horrendously as you shot it right in its shoulder and you see a noxious ooze start to drip out of it. It's sort of like a uh, uh, the same pearlescent that you saw on the outside of the egg, but it's in purples and oranges and what's oozing outside. Can I get a spot hidden roll from everyone? I have a new need, which is to use that as makeup somehow. <laughs> Oh. You can try and get close enough to uh, <laughs> put your hand in it and smear it on your face if you like. When it's dead, I will have an empire of makeup. <laughs> Here's what's great. <laughs> that, first of all. Uh, and then I got 73, but my spot hidden is 75. Oh, Amazing. Nice. Okay, Ruth, oh. you see as it swings its wing back. <laughs> but like a bellowing that you feel in your bones. It shakes you when it makes this horrible sound that I don't want to blow out the microphone to do. Um, and you see it has seven teats oozing a little green substance as well on its underbelly. Uh, it's got sort of, sort of like a, a an insect's thorax with a big, you know, Oh. behind, uh, but uh, terrifying, like sort of like a giant V shape with these big back wings in the head and it's terrifying. But yes. you know who <clears throat> decides to overcome his bravery in this moment? Alfred Hackett takes uh -huh. one look at Mary, the love of his life that he'd do anything to prove to her that he is worth it in his overalls and his page boy cap. He takes off his cap and he steps up and he says, Take me first, you ugly monster! And the monster reaches out his giant claw with a human like hand beneath it, and such agility reaches through his skin and pulls out his insides. You see oh. shock on his face as his eyes bulge. You see the whites all around his pupils, and he says, Mary, as blood spurts from his mouth. Everybody has to roll for Santa again. <laughs> oh. Nobody's lost more than five points in a single roll yet, right? I haven't. I did the one time. You did. Ruth did, did yeah. Oh, but yeah, I passed this on. I passed too. Wow. Um, I was busy what writing a new title. Lexi, ladies. <laughs> Sorry, what? Man sacrifices himself to save unrequited love of his life as he proposes. He said, Mary, which could have been her name or a proposal. Absolutely. Could have. Uh, I, I rolled a 57, so I think I failed. I got a 10 out of 35, so I'm. Gucci. 
which was, <laughs> has not definitely yet. yet. We, I think yeah, that's very Gucci. Well done. <laughs> okay, Steph, uh, you're going to have to roll okay. your D6 again. Did you have one? I do. I have a D6 and I've got a six. Fuck. Back. You, as lose. we say. Oh no. Soul. Oh no. Sanity. Back. Steph. Abigail Formosa okay. is okay. dancing. You're in the corner beside the window, okay. and uh, you scream so gutturally and loud. I don't want to hear that yet. You that's against your will that may upset this horrendous creature. <laughs> and then what? Uh, and then what? Uh, do you, oh God, oh God, you, you. What do you mean, Mother? Throw the lamp at it. I throw the lamp at it! It turns to you. Oh shit! In the corner by the window. Oh, no. It comes Abigail. so close. You can smell its putrid, dank breath, oh, and it opens up its wide maw, and you can see that little dangly thing in the back of its throat. Oh, it's dangling. Oh, it's dangling. Oh, oh. Hello, it makes a sound like macaroni oh, and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, now I'm just quoting off. Okay. <clears throat> And right as you think that it may be the end of your it's life. It's called a uvula. <laughs> it snaps its maw shut right in your face. <gasps> right in front of you. And then it takes off out the window. <gasps> oh, it scared it away. Oh, man. Oh, Where's oh boy. Where are you oh, for cute. All for cute. It left. <laughs> you look but around I'm not okay. and the baby is nowhere to be seen uh the the corpse of dr bryden has fallen back against the wall near the table and slumped to the floor alfred is in a crumpled heap in the middle of the room you hear the wail of sirens start to approach it must have been the landlady after all the commotion and you see Abby. mary cowering in the corner she, she doesn't seem to she her face is completely blank she doesn't seem to even be seeing anything anymore hello there I, did you um, have an original instinct steph no 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 originally oh by the way did you mark minus six on your oh yeah um, i've got less sanity than ever before in my life excellent Okay. I'm so shocked I'm alive. I'm so grateful. I feel like I've seen the light in the darkness of the tonsil that was dangling in my face. Ooh. That was some move, Abby. Oh, it's quite a lamp. Quite a lamp. You okay? No. Mm -mm. I probably won't be okay for a minute. What about the other eggs is what I'm like immediately concerned about. Yeah. It's time to call Edith. Yeah, okay. we, we, yes. Mary, dear. Yes. It's, She's not it, moving. We should bring her home. She's Is not she moving. dead? She's not moving. Or oh, she's open. Can, She's can, just catatonic. Can I, I can, just put some cocaine on it? Yeah, can I try to oh. do almost like a smelling salt under her nose? Uh, Sure. Can you roll for first aid? Yes. Uh, I will spend two luck points um, to get it down to exactly my number. Okay. 50. She turns. She looks at you in the eyes, Evelyn. Yeah. As you're crouched down to her level, because she's cowering in a fetal position, uh, but still, you know, on her on her haunches. Yeah. She, her eyes blink, and she looks and recognizes you, and then looks to the slumped corpse of Dr. Bryden and just starts screaming. 
and oh. screaming and screaming. And as uh, uh, the door flings open for maybe the fourth time tonight, uh, it, it's, it's men in white coats. And they're rushing oh. around. They, they see the four of you splattered with gore and they grab you up and they, they see, they see, uh, they see Mary just catatonic there and they put her, they have one stretcher between them and, uh, there's, there's three men in all and, uh, they grab, uh, let's see, they see, um, Abigail was furthest away. So they grab Eloise and they grab Ruth and, and then the, uh, and then one man grabs two. He's a very big orderly and white, all in white. And then the other two men take their the stretcher and they put Mary on it and they start walking her out. Wow. Um, Unhand me. What are you doing? Oh, lady, it's, it's going to be fine. Uh, we're so sorry. Let, let's get you. Please come, to, come into the ambulance. Is there another lamp? No, there's no other lamp. Uh, let's see, Eloise and Ruth, you could roll for a brawl if you want to try and get out of their arms, yeah, but they seem determined to, to take you to the hospital, and they've there's already got Mary else. down I the don't. hallway. Listen, I don't do well with blood, but I am okay, and I, and I, I, I don't want to be touched by these men. I don't want to be forced in this truck, so if anything, I'm going to take out my wallet again. Oh. <laughs> I strongly weapon. failed. Can I push this one? Uh, you want to push it? All right, we haven't talked about push rolls. You may always roll again, unless it's for sanity or for luck. And uh, you may push the roll by rolling again. And if you don't get the push roll, there are catastrophic consequences. Can I use, yeah. can I use luck too? You may spin luck if it's, if it's less than 10 needed to succeed in the roll. And then that luck is gone until we, uh, and then until you replenish it by re-upping your character stats at the end of a session. Oh, okay. So we All got right. one chance. I don't know who these people are. I don't <clears throat> particularly appreciate it. I have bad experiences with mysterious men in white coats. This is not happening. I failed again. <gasps> no! He no. happened to have a straight jacket that was oh. in, he had a very big back pocket and he takes out the straight jacket, oh. pulls it over you, Ruth, and straps your arms behind your back. He, he's you bringing you down. Yeah, and there's a, a white van outside. It's uh, like a box truck and it's got uh, an opening and closing door, like like a ambulance, except... Um, it says sanitarium, Arkham yeah. Sanitarium on the outside. And they've got Mary in there on the stretcher already. Ruth is being put in, in the straight jacket. Ladies, would you like to come um, in? Okay, I did not I did not succeed with this roll. And so my options right now are, um, I could spend some luck and try to roll again, right? Because it was you under 10. Can, uh, two separate things. You can okay. either roll again, push the roll, maybe bad consequences, or if it's pretty close, you can spend luck. And that's just a guaranteed success if you spend the luck. Okay, it was close. I, I was, um, my luck is, let's see. I got 31 out of, what was I rolling? Or where are you rolling? <laughs> I'm you were going to bribe Were you brawling? <laughs> so maybe credit rating. Let's say again? They, I would say credit rating determines whether or not you ex you're bribed. Oh, okay. So then in that case, I did great because I've got hmm, great credit. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, you you hand you hand a, a ten dollar bill to the orderly that was coming for you, and he says, "Ma'am," and tips his hat and puts it inside his hat. <laughs> no, no, no. I would I would like to roll for all of my friends. They've already taken Ruth and Mary out. Uh, if you guys are following along with them, then you're now outside of uh, the Board and Arms Hotel, and the landlady Pansy is just, oh, oh, but what's in there? I don't know. I need to go protect Ruth. I, okay. I'm gonna uh, run. I'm gonna run after Ruth. I've got this, Eloise. Well, I'm coming with you. I'm not. Oh, I'm yes. not going to believe you. I. I'm not even hired on here. I'm just here. I'm just okay. here. I just sort of imagined this was happening at the same time. Like you're handing uh, money. Yeah. And Albert I'm is already. Ruth. Albert has taken the rifle out of your hand, Eloise. When he saw you come out of the building with it, he's placed it in the trunk of the Studebaker, slammed it shut. He got in the Studebaker, and he's revving. The engine is already rolling. Abigail, what are you doing? I don't know. I 
you still in Alfred's room, just in the corner shocked. with your involuntary action? Yes. Come with no. me. Come in the Studio Baker. We're going to go. We're okay, going to just trail I, them. I we're going to go follow with, them. I'm going to go with Eloise, and we're going to take them. Yeah. All right, the sanitarium vehicle has already left. Ruth, you're in it with Mary. Oh. And, uh, she can hear your voice if you want to talk to Mary. She's still screaming. <laughs> All right, Mary, we're going to figure this out. I don't know what the heck is happening, but we're going to figure it out. I'm very sorry about both of your boyfriends. Who are you people? Okay, hours later, uh, it's the wee hours of the morning. And you were in the sanitarium oh. uh, <laughs> in a hospital room. Um, I imagine uh, Mary is in the bed. Uh, there's a second bed. Ruth, uh, they decided that, that the uh, straight jacket may have been a bit much. They were just trying to help. But Mary definitely needs medical attention and, and uh, psychi psychiatric attention. Um, so so uh, you were in the room. And uh, who's been there sitting with you all uh, night? is Mary's brother. Her brother uh, oh. came to meet you as soon as he heard. His name is William, you've learned. Uh, and the, the doctor comes in and says, Miss Bleeker, you're free to go. And he leaves. What kind of place is this? I say it to William. <laughs> <laughs> they drag you in they keep you all day then they randomly send you home maybe i don't want to go home maybe i want to know what's going on maybe i want to know is your sister okay is she is she Shh. please I'm so worried about Mary. He seems like a nice man. He's he's sort of thin and gawky. Uh, he's wearing he's wearing a um, a sweater vest with a nice sort of brown and yellow mustard pattern on it, with a buttoned up shirt underneath. He's he's very put together with kind of a little off kilter glasses and must hair. You it's, seem it's cute. nice. Have you ever been dirty in your whole life? Dirty, dirty. Um, well, uh, let me think. When it's Mary and I were children, to answer that question, I don't know. Hmm? Sorry, I interrupt. I just feel so guilty. I, I'm, I'm studying. Uh, she came to Miss Katonic to follow me, and whatever happened, I, I feel like it's my fault. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't mean to drop all those eggs there. Well, what? The ex, uh, he's just been waiting. He knows nothing of what's happened, oh, okay. uh, except he's just been by Mary's side. And Mary starts to blink her eyes open. William, he would, I can't. And she starts to recount what you guys already know. The windows, they exploded inward and shards of glass. Um, in fact, each of you are, are pricking off uh, shards of glass. And since you've had time to look down at yourselves and, and see and sort of assess what damage you might have taken that you were not even aware of, um, I'm going to have you each give me um, a roll to see if you took any damage from the, um, uh, give me a constitution roll to see whether you took any damage from the glass. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Ruth. No, good. Good for me. Oh, okay. Good for Ruth. Evelyn, not so good. Ooh. I mean, it's not going to be horrible. You didn't notice till now, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> Unless it was a 100. It's 99. <gasps> <gasps> oh, girl. <laughs> Evelyn looks down and sees oh. on the side of her body is... Well, what uh, can you describe your clothing to me, Evelyn? Yeah, um, she has sort of a a, a, a pinafore, as it were, a, a, a collared shirt and a, and a pinafore dress that buttons up the front calf-length mm -hmm. skirt. Modest and and Honest. 
covered. Yeah. Uh, then in, in what thigh, now, though? That's in question. your thigh, you didn't notice because a big shard of glass was flung with such force when this creature came through the window, it ripped the hole in your skirt, which sort of went outward. So you didn't, no one noticed it and you were in shock. Uh, but now you're seeing blood drip down your ankle of this big wound and uh, you'd sort of start to crumple. A, a nurse was walking by the door and comes in and, and starts to help you tend to your wounds there. Uh, I need you to roll a D, uh, let's call it a D3. Four. Okay, it's a D3, so take two. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it, it's something that can be managed and you are in basically a hospital. It's a sanitarium, but they have all the supplies of a hospital. Did anybody else fail their constitution roll? I failed. Okay. I got a 65. Uh, that, uh, you know, it was bad 65 for everyone. is not bad. Critical failure, yeah. And what's your constitution? 45. Okay. Um, well, can you roll uh, a uh, D3? Oh, okay. you do want, you have a D6. I'll do a D6 and divide by two. Mm -hmm. You can round well, up, please. I've got a, um, I got a one. Uh, okay, okay. then so you would that take be? one HP damage. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so Mary is talking to William and recounting everything that's happened and how, you know, she saw the head just pop off like a jar of jam and just start spurting. And she, she's lived it all over again and sees, oh, it can be happening. My Carl, my Carl, I, I, I wanted him to wed me someday. And, <laughs> uh, and then Alfred, he ran at the thing. He, he didn't even pause. He just ran at it and it grabbed it and punched through his heart, his heart that loved me. And it wrenched out his insides. Had such huge claws and fat wings and no. And, and she lies catatonic and William looks very shaken. I mean, obviously this is his sister, but he already knew something horrible had happened. But he, he closes the curtain around her and he, he pulls you four out into the hallway. Mm -hmm. he, hey, I sounded him out. I think I know what this is. That Maybe he's not. Him. He's what? I keep going. Hi. I've been studying local lore to Ipswich County. And, well, there, there, there was this lore that I remember reading something. I've, I've read something in the library that talked of, of, of uh, something that flew over the salt marshes, marshes that, that, well, I remember seeing the picture and it, it sounds like what you're all describing. What book? Oh, uh, I was in Orne Library at the university. I, uh, something on in the folklore section. We should go there once my leg is bandaged. <gasps> what? It's oh, been so long. I have to say, I am not doing okay. I, I my, my constitution is all right. I'm not injured, but I'm seeing a lot of blood, <sighs> and I still haven't I, talked. To oh Edith. yeah, Evelyn bled in front of you. Can you please roll for sanity? <laughs> There's a lot going on right now. <laughs> With blood, it feels dirty to me. It just feels like it shouldn't be on the outside of people's bodies. Um, I am okay. Would you guys uh, like oh, to go God. rest for the night? Would you like to go home or sleep in the sanitarium beds? What just rolled It is the wee minutes. hours of the morning. We would like to sleep in the beds, but there's five <laughs> eggs out there. Am I un incorrect? that we need to, yeah. they, they've hatched. We, we still, we don't know if they hatched. They had a different sort of incubation environment, but it still should be noted a call should be made. I, I just, I just, I just wrote right. a, a call. A 57 <laughs> out of a 35 for sanity. Okay. Uh, well, this was not a terrible amount of blood, so you're just gonna lose two sanity. But as uh, you continue to rant and rave in the hallway, you're folded in half, hyperventilating. You Gross. just want a break. It's been a long night. Wait, I just want to eat it. Eat it. There's like there's monsters that are going to be in our presence soon, and then there's going to be more blood. There's going to be. You more want blood. to 
do you want to use the sanitarium phone at the reception desk to call Enid? Now, remember, she doesn't live in the construction site. Well, I have her number, don't I? You have her number. Okay, so you go down to the Just reception call the desk. the operator. The they'll, they'll patch you into wherever she is. Exactly. Operator, uh, patch me through to Edith. Uh, Enid Carrington. Edith Carrington. Ooh, please. Edith or Enid? I have an Enid Carrington. Edith. Enid. 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 Oh, you're a good oh, friend, you. Eloise. You're a good friend, eh? My great she's, friend. She's had, had a horrible so night. When you I imagine are... you all followed down the stairs and... No, um, I, I stay here because I'm, oh, I'm sick of William? waiting for the orderlies to come and pat, so I'm just going to fix myself up. This is ridiculous. Oh, oh no. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. She Wait. Don't. So, Evelyn, I think you're in the hallway and there's sort of like a, a cart with a bunch of supplies. Yeah, I guess, or, no, I, maybe not a cart. Maybe it's behind the nurse's station on the corner of the floor yeah, as I, Eloise went down to the phone. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> well, what's this about? Edith, my good friend. Edith. Edith. Enid. 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 <laughs> Eloise, is that you? Yes, my dear. Good friends. Sometimes you get them mixed up. Edith! And we all start with E. It's a thing about women in high society. I know, but why do you wake me from my slumber? That's, what you're, that's why you're such a good friend, because you understand. Edith, oh. I have to tell you, we found out what is in those Did you strings. call me Edith again? <laughs> no, Edith. Edith. Enid. My <laughs> name is Enid, dear. Edith, I'm sorry. I'm crazy right now. I've seen a lot of blood. <laughs> oh, what? Blood? Yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm. Are trying you to still tell investigating you. for my rocks, my yes, eggs? But I'm trying to tell you, my dear friend. I'm awake now. They're eggs, and they lead to something dangerous. One of them hatched, and it's a horrible monster. Oh no! It bit uh, off a thumb, and it bit off a palm, and I just am so very afraid for your health. Please promise that you won't go near those eggs. Well, my construction site, I, uh, oh, my home, my beautiful home in the building. I, am, I must go. I'm going to alert the police department and, and get them over to my site right away. Let's get those nasty things out of my cellar. That's a great idea. Do not go near those eggs, Enid. They're eggs. They're she eggs. Hangs up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so much better now. Thank you. Okay. So she said she was going to alert the authorities to go to her construction site and get rid of whatever was there. But it is 3 a.m. Um, William. You guys, uh, yeah, you go back into the hospital room. <sighs> Please let me know if there's anything. Uh, I'm frightened, but, well, I, I know that uh, strange things like this, they don't just go away on their own. Sometimes they need to be banished. Yeah, you got any uh, insight on that? I'm not a monster expert. I, I suppose I could take you to Orn Library and, and we'll show, maybe we can look for the uh, the book that I found, um, but it's not gonna be open until at least 7 a.m. Define not open. I like your style. Uh, do you wanna go like to the library? Okay, do you bring William with you? Yeah, we we make sure Mary's okay. I yeah. I I he I've, plants a kiss on her forehead and says Godspeed to Mary as he leaves the sanitarium with you guys in the Studebaker. Poor Albert never gets a break. This man is up all night. I'm so glad that you guys are okay. I just can't imagine what it was like to be in this horrid jackets. They're so ugly. Oh, it was it was only um you and uh a uh, Ruth, who is in the straight jackets? Wait, am I there? Yeah. Okay. I uh, guess. What was it like, Ruth? Unpleasant. Look, let's <laughs> not. Oh, I understand. They were just doing their best. Uh, you arrive at the library. It's dark outside, but you're starting to see the dawn over the horizon. Uh, it's a beautiful old campus. It's, uh, you can't drive, you drive to the parking lot and then it's a, a walking pedestrian campus. Beautiful old stone buildings with, each building has spires on top of it, black wrought iron spires. Oh. And the windows all have, have black grating over them, but a beautiful and ornate grating. It's a rather terrifying and yet grandiose place. I got away with locked doors. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, it's a your big way wooden them. door in the front of the library. Uh, it's like, you know, um, maybe eight feet tall of a door and uh, four feet wide. It's wooden and it has like inlay cuts in it. It's very beautiful with a, a big uh, padlock on the on the oh. or the door handle. Do would you like to roll for lock picking? I would like to try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a lock picking roll. Uh, this is a pretty big basic padlock, so it's just gonna be, you know, a standard difficulty. Okay. Here's I a hairpin. Thank mm. you. Ah, oh, very thoughtful. Uh, oh. Have a bonus die. A bonus die means a second tens die and you can take the better. A penalty <sighs> die is two, two tens dies and take the worse. Um, Evelyn has stolen a crutch from the um, hospital and um, and has has not yet patched up her leg, but has the like sewing the suture kit that she stole from behind the, the nurse's station and and plans to tend You haven't room. done it yet? Awesome. We had to leave in a hurry. Oh. Someone said library and I just I look down as I'm taking the hat and go, Evelyn, what are you doing? It's bandaged. It's just not sewn. Do you want to sit down okay. and uh, sew up, uh, give yourself some stitches? I would, but, okay. but we there's, have to get in the door first. Steps. You said I get okay. to take the, the better tens, right? Yes. How about a one? You got a one one? I got like zero one. Okay, well, uh, Ruth Bleeker, can you please, in the small box next to lock picking, can you please check that box? Uh, by the way, this is a thing that I've been forgetting to tell you. If you can remember any incredible, like extreme successes, I'll let you check the box next to that skill. And at the end of the session, you get to roll to improve that skill for your character. Oh, we neat. play future sessions with these character sheets. What a cool mechanic. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, Ruth, can you describe to me the way in which you pick this lock with extreme ease with your critical success? All right, so I've seen these before. These are used for keeping you out of the places where the answers are. And what I live for is getting into the places that the answers are. And I'm fueled by watching William and Mary. I had sisters of my own. I still have one of them. And the other one losing her set me on the path to that bad time with the straight jackets that I don't want to talk about. So with all of that, Fueling around, I'm not going to let that happen to someone else. I'm not going to be kept away from justice like I was that time. I am going to get in to this building. And I think that hairpin made the difference. I think I just got to poke it sort of up in the right direction. And then like... Amazing. The giant padlock falls to the ground as the door swings open to this beautiful a gigantic old library. You step inside and you smell the books and the pages, years of wisdom and lore, all of human learning since the burning of Alexandria is here. And you see just expansive bookshelves is up to the, the triple um, uh, three floor ceilings and a beautiful stained glass uh, sunroof in the center above a, a central dais that must be where the librarian typically sits during opening hours. Uh, who would like to start searching uh, and where would you like to search? Oh, I, I would love to. <laughs> uh, William can, reminds you, can I, can it I, is, uh, I believe the folklore section is on the second floor and the I Eastern. know my way around a library, <laughs> thank you very much. Don't you talk down to my girl right now. She knows where yeah. the books are in the library. Evelyn starts marching with force towards the folklore section. She doesn't look at a Dewey Decimal System chart. She just knows. <laughs> uh, can you give me a roll for library use? And anybody else, and now that you're in the section Evelyn has led you to, if you can roll for library use uh, if you'd like to. Oh, okay. We'll see how she does. You can go ahead. If you, uh, if, if you need help, they can help you. If you got it, then 
Ah, uh, 32 and my thing is an 80 so that's incredible that is definitely a hard success Great. all right uh, as you pull oh. down a book from the shelf that says uh superstitions and folklore in essex county uh william says yes yes that's the book yes I, it's not ipswich county essex county essex county that's the one and uh he pulls out Let's see, you find an article that I'm gonna need for you to read me, if you could, Evelyn. Superstitions and Folklore of Essex County. The infamous Marsh, oh, it got way too small for me to read. There we go. The infamous Marsh Wizard of Ipswich has been hunting Essex County for centuries, according to many local accounts. Evidence of his existence goes back to at least the 18th century, where accounts of disappearing cattle and people were associated with the Marsh Wizard. Such accounts include the notion that the wizard had a demon familiar, as the flapping of giant wings was reported on more than one occasion. The tales grow more outlandish over time, with some claiming that the marsh wizard had a dragon-like steed that he uses to ride the night skies and terrorize local residents. The illustrations below is an artist's interpretation of testimony given by a young man named Andrew Lehman. Not, got nothing on Eloise who claims to have seen the wizard riding the beast over the salt marshes one night in 1906. That wasn't that long ago. Oh, and here I was thinking that that was the mom. And this That's is a he. Funny. Well, this might, either they were mistaken or, or, or if of the agenda, or, or maybe this, maybe this is the father that flies around to feed the mother and the children. Oh, and, there and, was some, and, Teat action. So uh, I would guess if we had to guess, pro probably the mom. But who knows? Who knows? But, sure, sure. But the, but this one claims his existence. That's true. Or maybe the author was. But just, the man uh, who rides the drag. Right. This. Right. I don't believe in wizards. What are we reading? Um, <laughs> it's oh, hard to I believe say. the the key in the pronoun is the wizard of the salt marsh, uh, says William as he stands there. Like a, a human person did this? Uh, uh, it, it's it, according to the lore, it says that the Marsh Wizard is reported. There was many accounts of the Marsh Wizard. Evidence of existence goes back to the 18th century. So he would be at least 300 years old now, uh, disappearing cattle. Um, and he had a demon familiar with these giant wings. I understand. Yeah. I misread. I've lost a lot of blood. I'm going to mm -hmm. sew my leg up now. That's all right. You all have seen a lot, lost a lot of blood. It's been a long night so far. Uh, but we only have one night of this adventure, not two. <laughs> so um, let's see. And then the final line, since I don't have a handout to give you for you to refer to in person, but although I can uh, send this along. Last um, moon in 1906, which was less than 20 years ago. By Andrew Neiman. Just if you guys happen to have a tab available, I'm going to give you the link to that document. Oh, yes, we do have a tab available. <laughs> Got quite a few uh, tabs just available. Want a second, second look. Um, okay, okay, and then uh, huh, Andrew Lehman. William says. Uh, that, 1906, that's okay. what? 14? No, uh, 19 years ago, he's probably still okay. alive. Okay. Well, Anybody it know I what access. I didn't Hold get on. access to that document. We didn't get access. That's access okay, don't worry about it. Oh, no. We're in the restricted access. part of the library. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You're have in the they invented phone part. books? Uh, phone have book. they invented phone books? Uh, that's a oh, great question. That's a quick and easy search in my lexicon. When were phone books invented? Could we just call the operator and they could patch us through? There's a human white page. Yes, they, were, they are around. Sure. We're yeah. in a library. Uh, maybe... Yeah. Do you want to uh, do you want to check and see if you find the spot hidden roll behind the receptionist desk? Uh, 
Uh, if I spend some luck, I can do it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You do find the phone book. Whether or not, there was definitely a directory for Essex County, and there's only one name listed next to Andrew Lehman. Uh, one number. Someone uh, it has the address that the that uh, the operator you know can patch you through with that information. How, how far away is Essex County from us? You're in it. Oh, this is Essex County. Mm -hmm. Eloise, you want to do the talking? Yes. Abigail. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I'm happy to, if we need here. <laughs> sure. I don't want to do call? it. So someone. You don't want to do it? Okay, no. I'm happy to. Okay, I'm happy to. Pick up the phone and you mm -hmm. call the number. Oh, hello, dear. Uh, oh. Yes. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Oh, are you okay oh, there? Oh, grow old, oh, that's um. Mm. I was uh, who is this? Oh, hello there. This is Abigail Formosa from the paper. I am a journalist, and I'm just I'm just researching some very bizarre things here. And we just wanted to know if you had some information for us. Are you okay? You sound like you're coughing up a hairball there. No one's talked to me. In almost 20 years. Oh, that's quite a long time there. Now, uh, are, did, I guess you're not married. What is this a crank caller? Oh, I've never oh. been married. I'm just a lonely middle aged man with nothing to live for. Oh, that's his tarnished reputation. What? Ever since I wrote that, gave that testimony in the paper. Hmm. You want to tell us about the um, your testimony now? I would like to lend Abigail some charm. Abigail. I would like to. I would like to just give her a little pep talk, and okay. you're gonna have to roll for charm on the phone with Andrew Lehman because he's not a very amenable person, and he doesn't seem like he wants to talk about that in particular. Uh, if if do you want to me uh, or the, you the lean Emily. into the phone? Who, you tell me who's on the phone. I, I want Abigail's on the phone. I would like to give her some confidence. And some, Can she give me some charm or confidence? <laughs> uh, if she helps you out, then you can have a bonus die on your charm roll. Oh, sick. Yes, I would like to help her out. I would like to just pull her aside and say, Abigail, yeah. you are the most powerful journalist I have, and also the only journalist oh. I have ever met. And oh. I believe in you. Okay. And we are strong women yes. who know what we're doing. And oh. you just need to get in there and you got to tell them there's money, buddy. There is, don't be a sucker, pal. And just, just say that to him. Okay. okay. Give me a roll for charm okay. and you can roll your tens die twice or you just me. roll twice and take the better tens. Okay. Okay. So the first one, the first one is a. Ten, biatch. Oh, and then the oh. second one is a one. So we're gonna go with the ten. <laughs> the one. You want the one. Ten. Do the one. one. Do the one. <laughs> the one. Okay, great. And I call him and I say, "Listen, pal, we're not suckers, and neither are you. And and we're there's money in this, honey, and we're." Wait, you're gonna tell us everything we want to know. See, when you say the word money, he perks right up. Uh, uh, yeah, how much uh, can you send it in a? Well, uh, he gives you his address and you send me a check. And if you give me, you give me, you give me five dollars, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. Okay, see, we'll give you, we'll give you, we'll give you six. Oh. <gasps> You can That's hear the girl. stunned silence on the that other end of the line. <laughs> okay, uh, what do you ask him? He seems amenable now to answer any question since you gave him that bribe. Okay, I just asked the group for a second. Hey, what should we ask him? Well, we need to know his tale of what he saw. We want to know your tale of what you saw. <laughs> tell I us don't about know the what I can tell you, but I can show you. Head to the salt margin Ipswich. 
I'll meet you on the corner of 8899 County Road. And he clicks the phone. Okay. He goes, the lion goes dead. Clicks the phone. You know what I mean. Yes. We're off oh, to meet the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> That's been published. Of it, Switch. Yeah. The wonderful mm -hmm. wizard of Lehman. Maybe they'll make a movie of it someday. All right. Do you hop in the car from this library? Do you take anything on your way out or put the padlock back or just go? <laughs> Evelyn, you want to loot the joint? Yes. <laughs> um, are there any? I, I would just like to very quickly. Uh, it's hand, a handful of occult books that are probably here in the folklore shelf because he said something about banishing. William said um, some sort of banishing. So uh, can I quickly just grab a handful of books that look like they would contain such knowledge of banishment rituals? Whatever. Sure. This is uh, Miskatonic University. So this is not something I prepared, but maybe you can give me another library use role. Okay. Let's see if I can find something real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Hmm? 38 out of 80. Oh, okay. Uh, you find, hmm, in the occult books, you, you pick up something called the Beatus Methodivo. It's in Latin. It says circa 300 AD below it on the shelf. It's sort of in a glass case. Uh, and uh, you get to go up 2% in occult. Uh, once you study it, you can take it with you. Oh. And since you have, you, you can go ahead and take it now because I'll take, I'll, I'll take it with me. <laughs> I'm a quick reader. Okay, awesome. You guys ready to go? Anything else you want to do? Great. All, All right. right. I grab a when would book just for fun? A what <laughs> book? A what you and your pulps. I love oh. pulps. And, you know, I think that we're going to write a great one after this. You Which is your I favorite? Added. Spicy tales, spicy detective, spicy western, or spicy western tales? Spicy science. <sighs> oh. All of those spicy editions are in one of those put back racks that's right next to the center uh, center bar that you guys are standing behind, and you just pocket one on the way out. I'm a bad. I will girl. put the padlock back on so no one can tell we were there. Awesome. awesome. The padlock is back on, obviously, with that critical success of lock picking. You didn't damage any part of it, so it snaps closed again. And you guys head out uh, to exactly where he told you to go on the county road, I imagine. Is that where you instruct yes. Albert to lead you? Great. Yes. You see a man, it looks like he's walked there, standing on the side of the road. He's wearing uh, just a white just a beater and, and black pants covered in mud on the feet with suspenders on. Uh, and um, he looks very unwashed and unkempt. And as you get out, he says, six dollars. I don't have it. Oh. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, well, we've, yeah. we've got it. No, he puts out his hand and then he points into the swamp <laughs> and in the swamp you see nothing it's oh well the sun has risen now it's just about sunrise and uh you see um on the edge of this marsh you see uh it's actually very near the construction site not far at all he points and he says go straight this way i saw the beast right above here as the sun was rising flying west. And uh, he points to you, he describes to you uh, an island in the middle of this swamp, and uh, that's about where he saw uh, the the wizard riding this beast that he where, had drawn. Where you saw it 20 years ago, or did you see it recently? No, it was 20 years ago when I was riding my horse, and well, I don't have a horse anymore, but I was riding it, and then oh, I just saw this great, terrible beast, and my horse it was so terrified that he ran off into the marsh, and I well, I never went back for him. I just ran home, and I, I told everyone, but no one believed me. Go in there. Beware. Yeah. 
yeah, in your own, you know, he just starts mumbling incoherently and wanders off with the six dollars. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't like the most useful use of the six dollars, but um, did he just like wander off? We can't get him back. He's I mean, we did get an address. He brought you here. He brought you to the edge of the salt marsh. Oh, uh, and this is this is where he saw that beast. Uh, well. William, William decided to part ways with you back at Miskatonic, and he wished you the best of luck. He, he was okay. a little too scared, and he went back to his dormitory. Well, listen, we're trying to meet the wizard, right? Oh, the mar you want to meet the marsh wizard? No. Well, yeah, he has the answers about these eggs so why I don't mean, we just say hey wizard come on out we've gotten lots and lots of money because it seems pretty dangerous because the last time it happened we a few of us almost died and got some holes in our body well that's why we brought this this time and evelyn opens up her her giant carpet bag and pulls out a hand uh crossbow Oh my goodness! Oh, <gasps> oh my we goodness. forgot about the crossbow. Oh, a crossbow, a rifle, money. Oh. Yeah, we're on uh, top Albert. The triple Albert pops threat the trunk of society. The rifle. What? Sorry, oh. Albert uh, hands you your rifle, Eloise. Oh, thank you. you. He's, I, he's I not about to go into that. this marsh, though. <laughs> okay, I'm armed with my book. Got anything else I can grab? Um, well, here, and she, she hands you the scalpel from the nurse's kit that she stole. Oh, sure. It'll do. Did you have anything else in there? I, I'm really just a pen in a book. Um, I've got... You've got your wits, Abigail. Oh. Okay. All right, do you guys want to head into the marsh? Yes. Okay, okay. great. Uh, I would like for you all to, uh, as you wander through, uh, th there's mud up to your ankles as you continue to wade through. I'm sure Eloise hates it on her beautiful shoes. Uh, and as you walk deeper and deeper into the marsh amongst the trees and uh, all the bramble, can I get uh, a spot hidden roll? Or a navigate roll, either one. We got one success. Yes, 15. Excellent, two success. I will try. Do we need more than one? Because I can uh, spend some luck. No, you're good. Oh. That's plenty. Okay. Ruth and uh, Eloise, both at the same time, they see this. Uh, it looks like there's, uh, there's, a, there's water. Uh, and then in the midst, like a deeper water, like a, maybe a knee deeper, waist deep water. And then on the other side, looks like the island that you heard Andrew Lehman mention uh, was in here. Um, there's trees around it. And you see across the lake on one of the trees, there's a big esoteric symbol carved into it. Uh, it's got sort of a horseshoe shape with jagged, intricate details inside, and you, you can't see much from the distance you're at. But do you guys approach? Can yes. I can I roll for arts and crafts and see if I recognize it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Great. Okay. As can I can I do that thing where I'm helping? I'm like flipping through the book for her to sort of. Oh, I got a I got a forty four out of symbol? seventy, so I definitely oh okay. This is unlike anything you've ever seen in the art world. Uh, the art world would, in fact, be astonished to see a work of art this intricate as you wade no, no, across I, I the muck. Yeah, I'm saying it's oh, okay. unknown. It is an unknown, <laughs> otherworldly design. I recognize you, you learn the truth, unknown. and the truth is that it is unknown. <laughs> <laughs> I can't change the right. facts. This is nothing humans have ever seen before, unless maybe you're a marsh wizard. Is all, it in, all is of it my in, history, I see that nobody knows about this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, is the symbol okay. in the book that 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 we swiped from the library? The cult is it related to any 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 rituals or or sort of? You can Curses. flip through and take a moment to do that. We'll have you do a library use check in just a second. Okay. You, you all uh, continue to move towards the island and you see a, a central clearing ahead of you. And you can see the outline of some 
little huts in a circle, little houses, little lean-tos. And uh, I need everyone to roll for listen. Okay. Why didn't I take this? Okay. Oh. Ninety-four is not a crit fail, is is it? Not quite. I barely got it. Twenty-seven okay. out of thirty. Eloise hears a burbling and says, "Shh, what's that?" Oh, you hear that? a burbling and a burping of the mud in the in the swamp all around you as you all stand on this island. I hear and a you burping and a burbling of the mud all around this island. Gross. And you hear a clomping and a skittering. And as you look up into the tree that had the symbol that you saw, you see a strange figure. It seems to be made of mud and uh, muck and moss, and you guys are that man with the hat right there. So, but behind you is a creature that has hardly any face. It's as if it's wearing a plate mask. It doesn't seem to be real at all. You can't see it breathing. You just see it moving. I think that that's what's bumping and burbling. Is that over there? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, what do you guys want to do? How far are we from it? Uh, it is in the tree that you just walked past, and Evelyn was looking down at her book, looking yeah. uh, to see if she recognized this symbol. Um, Evelyn, I want you to roll for libraries to see if you recognize this symbol, and I want everyone else uh, to roll for luck. I do. 46. All right. Uh, you see something similar on page 46 of your book. Now it's in Latin. Uh, do you speak Latin? <laughs> no, I almost took it too. That's okay. You look at the pictures and you see a creature that looks similar to what you see in the tree. And you see a picture of that symbol. And uh, Eloise, because you got the listen roll, you hear something burbling behind you on the other side and across the island even further away. And you hear more bubbles coming up from the muck further away. I don't have anything that's gonna help me. You can't shoot mud or give <laughs> mud money. Uh, would you like to try? No, I just, okay. I'm gonna tell my friends what I hear, but I, I don't know if any of my skills are applicable right now. What am I gonna do, draw the mud? No. Uh, did everyone roll for luck? I did. Do uh, I also I need failed. to fail that luck roll? I did. I got a 48, but my luck is a 60. So does that mean I succeed? You're good. I succeeded. Eloise, as you're turning your head because of your listening skills and you hear all these burblings, the creature jumps down on you. You need to roll <laughs> for fighting brawl. Oh, okay. Uh, is this like melee or is this with my gun? This is melee. Your rifle's in your hand, but it's going to take you uh, a minute to get hold of it. It's actually on your shoulders and it's got <gasps> its tiny mossy arms oh, around no. your neck. Okay, got a 93. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh. Uh yeah. It 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 uh you can push. It you for a minute. Uh does anybody else want to jump in the brawl? I'll or jump you in. Can push I'll roll. jump in. All right. Uh uh well, give me a roll for fighting as uh as Eloise, it's starting to uh, cut off your esophagus and you're losing air. I'd like you to roll a beaded dress, you bitch. <laughs> My beaded dress. I got a for? 10 for my fighting. Oh, yes. Ruth, describe to me how you rip this thing off Eloise and also check your fighting while you're at it. And Eloise, you can check your listening after you get a chance when you escape. Oh, and uh, Evelyn, uh, you read a little bit of, uh, like you've been trying to parse out the Latin and you understand the word wilderness, paramental. Those are all words that you've seen a lot in your medical studies. Abigail, mm -hmm. did you make your fighting one? I um, 
And it's out of a D10. Well, you just... Uh, no, it's, my it's against oh, your, your okay. fighting brawl. You're trying to roll under your fighting brawl, but Ruth, you succeeded. So you I got a are 93, able to so abysmal. Okay. All right, so uh, it, it's claws at you, Abigail, and you step back uh, just before it, it scratches your face. Um, so I want to fly yeah. at it. Uh, I, I, I was watching Evelyn reading the book and it sort of hit, hit me out of the corner of my eye. I didn't catch any of the sounds that Eloise was talking about. Uh, so I'm almost too late as it lands on your shoulders uh, and gets its little arms around you. But I'm so pissed off by all of this that I spin around and stab it in the back of its neck with the scalpel. And then tear Excellent. it off your shoulder. All right. Let's see how much damage. I'm going to say with your fighting role succeeding, you definitely get to cause damage. Uh, uh, let's see. Give me. My base modifiers are not. Right at hand. But um, I'm going to say that's a. Let's give it a, a D6. Awesome. Two. I mean, you really got it in there deep. All right. Uh, so you, you do deal two damage to the paramental. <sighs> As you see, <laughs> uh, you see five other paramentals coming towards you. Paramentals <laughs> and many o'clocks. All right. Well, that seems like as good as any to call this tale to a close. No! Friends, there is more adventure and maybe we can come back to it sometime. But uh, for now, wow. Uh, I can't believe everybody stayed with us all night for this very first episode of The Calyx. These girls have some constitution, dude. Like, yes. everyone's real tough. I, I might be a fucked terrible though, I constitution. Know. It's a miracle I'm alive. <laughs> Becca, you're such an incredible GM. Thank hey, you for having um, us. I have to give a mad props. This is not me. This is me studying Ties That Bind by Tom Lynch. This is in Doors to Darkness. And I believe this is what we will be giving away to our five winners. We have three of them. Uh, and then Jake has given out the other two as well. Um, and we'll uh, definitely give your emails uh, that Jake has collected along and you will get a copy of either, I believe this, uh, or maybe you'll have a choice of a couple. Um, but guys, thank you so much. Uh, can everybody just go around before we call it a night and everybody want to uh, uh, shout out where everyone can find you? Um, Gina? Sure. Hi, uh, I, I've been Gina. You can find me at Pocket Gina online on Mondays. I play Star Trek um, on uh, Q Times at six and on Mondays. And on Fridays, um, we're going to have the amazing guest Whitney. And um, for Failed Save over at Pixel Circus, that is 6 p.m. as Failed Save. And that is what we do. Um, and and I, I do lots of other podcasts as well. So just check out the socials for that. Yeah. And if anybody's watching on either YouTube or uh, I think wherever you're watching, if you scroll down, everybody's Twitter is in the description below and they'll be able to find this VOD on YouTube as well. Amy. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this was such a blast. I, you can find me at, at Enthusiami everywhere. I'm a streamer, so I play games. We have a book club this weekend. If you're watching this in the next couple of days, there's a nerds and music benefit show that I get to join a bunch of my absolute favorite people in the universe for uh, the double clicks, Jonathan Colton, Aliza Pearl, the library bards. Uh, it's going to be a blast. And yeah, thank you so much. What, what a treat. Aw, thanks, Amy. Uh, Whitney? Oh, y'all. Becca, thank you so much. I am not done with this character or this game, so I hope we get to come oh, back no. and more of this. Um, you can hey, see guess me what? Tomorrow. What? You can. Oh! <laughs> 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 um, you can find me tomorrow. I'm, um, I do a, every Thursday a heavy metal happy hour where I DJ metal for an hour at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And tomorrow I am interviewing Guar. They're going to come and bring me metal music to listen to. Um, every Monday 
Um, I do a thing called Metal Crush Mondays where I interview people in metal about their favorite horror movies and it's super fun. And uh, I have a newsletter at gimmemore.com and also follow me on Twitter at Tweety Moore and on Instagram at Whitney S. Moore. Uh, there I love doing a lot of stuff. Come and look at it. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. And stuff. Okay, you can find me at Steph Woodburn on Instagram and the tweeters. Um, sometimes I'm active and then sometimes during the pandemic I'm not active, but um, I'm also at my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Steph Woodburn, which I may, may or may not stream from at some point soon. But you can find me there and you can also find me, I'll just be writing um, in my journal because that's what I do all the time. So that's what I do. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for being here. It's been such a pleasure to have you. And thanks so much to you guys at home. I've been seeing your comments and all your encouragement. Um, we appreciate you so much being here for this adventure and uh, for following what we do. So uh, if you would take the time, maybe go on over to YouTube and follow Good Time Society. Really appreciate it. You can find the VOD there. And please, please share the VOD of this video. Um, you can also share it from Twitch. Uh, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm.